questions. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you loved ones. It's wonderful to have everybody on here. I see all smiling faces. So that's just fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Please understand people are coming in here a lot. So I'm just having to monitor a few things. Um, so yes, just, just so you guys are aware, this, these are kind of um, meetings that we want to have a little bit more of, which are questions and answers where you guys have the ability to be able to ask whatever you guys want. Please understand we have to give priority to people that have cases. Okay, so if you don't have a court case actually booked, please hold your questions and be respectful of the fact that there are people on here, which is primarily why we did this, because there were so many people that had court cases in the next two, three, four weeks, and we could feel their anxiety and their need to be able to talk to Darren and get some clarification around a few things. So we want to be able to offer that. So please allow a space for that. Um, if you guys could please honor that, we would really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, so hold on, we got some more people coming in here. Uh, what we'll do is we will do it in an open form. We'll allow you guys to be able to ask your questions. Um, I will be monitoring the chat feature as well so that um, people that have pending questions, if you could put, or pending court cases, sorry, if you could let me know that, I'm gonna take a note of that with your name. And then that way we can actually make sure that we address you and we can take care of, of the people that we really designed this, this evening for, okay? All right, so just give me one second. Oh, good morning from the Philippines. Hello, hello. That's wonderful. Good evening. Oh, we feel the love, you guys. It's just like I said in some previous recordings, um, Darren and I have been absolutely honored and overwhelmed and, and completely humbled at the amount of people that have risen to this. Um, obviously, the energy resonates with a lot of people, so it's it's been great. So uh okay so i'm just if i uh, a couple of you just while i'm letting people and admitting people in here can you uh anybody who has a pending court case if you could please um actually put your name or come into the chat and let me know that i need to yeah, have yes, some I can me. Hello. and if you could also put Hello. yourselves on mute everybody i'm giving you guys the option to be able to unmute yourselves but in order to be able to do that, I need you guys to keep on mute. Otherwise, it comes through on the recording. And speaking of recording, yes, we will be doing that. We're recording as we speak. So absolutely. So anyone who is has a pending court case, please put their names. Um, you have a court case soon. So Sharon, uh, Sharon, can you please put your, your court date in? Do you actually have a date for us yet? Okay, so Uriel, March 31st, okay. We got Uriel, we got Frank. Okay, Elmo. Uh, if I didn't say your name, put it in there again, please. Hi there, too. Does it count for children court? Absolutely. Uh, Linda K. Holy smokers, there's a lot of you guys. <laughs> so Uriel's court is tomorrow. Okay. Guess who gets priority? <laughs> Excellent. People with court cases. Uh, sorry, what was that? People with court cases. Absol absolutely, for sure. And here's the thing, you guys, once we kind of cruise through these questions for these people, um, we're going to open it up for an open forum. Um, Darren's kind of got a couple of treats here he wants to share with you guys as well. So it's just some excellent little morsels you guys are going to really enjoy him explaining and breaking down to give a little bit more language to all of this. Okay. Um, okay. So I think I have everybody. I knocked, I got, okay. So I have Sharon, I have Uriel, Frank, Elmo, and Linda K. So if there's, uh, I know we have other people that are going to be coming on. Hold on, as I said that, a whole bunch of people just popped on. So let me just admit these people. Okay, so if there's anybody else that I miss, please put your name in there. Otherwise, we're going to start with Uriel. So Uriel, if you can please unmute yourself. Everybody else, if you could please stay on mute, we would appreciate that. Thank you. So where's Uriel in the house? <laughs> I'm here. Excellent. Right. Okay, Uriel. 
Oh, so, excellent. I mean, it was you. And look at <laughs> you're at the top of the list. No I'm kidding, you're antsy. <laughs> okay, take it away. Okay. There, it's all yours. Okay. Then um, I was arrested uh, last week. Um, um, uh, the police stopped me, stopped me uh, when I was, uh, uh, I'm working as a, as a message. I, as a messenger, as a messenger uh, with the CBD, CBD uh, products, yeah. like uh, CBD uh, flowers, CBD hash, and CBD um, oil. Sure. And uh, in Israel, still, it's uh, it's an illegal substance, and it's uh, it's uh, in the um, it's 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 a drug in Israel. Like in Canada, it's uh, it's uh, already in the states. Also, it's uh, already legal in Israel. It's still it's still illegal. Um, illegal. Right. Okay. So uh, I was arrested for uh, I was in jail for uh, f- six days. Okay. And uh, when I appeared uh, appeared uh, on court, I didn't know what to say. But I I said like uh, you have no jurisdiction to to uh, to uh, to trial me to to have me in this trial, sure. it didn't work. It didn't yeah. work. Yeah. And uh, she gave me uh, six days, and then and now I'm in the house arrest in my mother's in my mother's house. Okay. And uh, and I have uh, an hearing at uh, in on Wednesday. Okay. It's something like uh, twenty hours from now. Okay. Um, what should I do? 20 hours from now, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your birth identifying documents, uh, again, the birth certificates are endorsed properly. Um, The definition of the endorsement there, if you are unfamiliar with the blurb that we are attaching to our birth certificates, just let us know and or check out the website because I think it's been posted up there several times. Um, Failing that when you walk into the courthouse, what you're going to want to be doing is putting that certificate into the possession of the sheriff. Uh, if it's, if they're called sheriffs in Israel or bailiffs, uh, I'm not too familiar with what their terminology actually is. Um, however, I think, the, I think we have bailiffs. Okay. Bailiffs. Yes. Yeah, it's essentially, it's the same type of office. So what you're doing is you're putting that party, the bailiff into possession of that security interest, which is attached to that security certificate. So the security interest is simply this. Hey, I want to take the debt that's associated to this certificate and I want to stick it to another party. And then other party happens to be the crown. The representative of the crown happens to be the crown prosecutor in that particular case, or you can simply assign it to either the minister of finance or the minister of justice. I wholeheartedly at this point recommend sending it or assigning it to the minister of finance first send it to him because this at the end of the day this is uh it all takes a monetary financial obligation so as soon as you put the assignment into the possession of another party that means uriel that you are no longer liable for it we've just had um two more examples of the system whether it was land titles or the courts themselves where The defendant walked in and they placed that certificate into the custody of the bailiff and the bailiff didn't want to do it. But at the end of the day, they wound up having to do it. Yes. Yeah, that's their, yeah, that's their primary position in the courts is to transfer securities and or assets or trustees around the system. So as soon as the judge, the judge isn't going to want to, uh, authorize the sheriff to do it, but you go ahead and do it. I hereby authorize you, bailiff, to take custody of the following security interest and deliver it to the securities intermediaries for the beneficiary. Now, what they're going to do now is you can actually ask them there as well as, hey, this needs to be credited to my secure or his security account. Now, the sheriff is going to know what this all means. They're going to pretend like they don't, but they do. So as soon as you put them in possession of that security, and as soon as the judge is made aware of it, Uriel, the man, is literally walking out of court. But be prepared. Again, this is the public side. They're still going to fight you. There's, you're still going to feel like there's a resistance, or you're still going to feel like this isn't working. But just remember, yeah. that's the public illusion that they need to maintain in order to keep this big show going, to keep everyone under their spell. So 
be prepared for that resistance. All you need to do is get a couple of maxims out of your mouth. Uh, the, the, the primary maxims that I would use in your particular case are is this one. Equity uh, shall impute an intention to fulfill an obligation. What that is essentially saying is, hey, your honor, I've transferred or I've delivered the interest attached to this security to a third party. Now equity is going to step in and make sure the rest of the ball keeps rolling because that obligation says that it has accrued and it's now owed to you because you took it upon yourself to, to move that liability or that debt to the appropriate party. Again, everybody, remember, when we volunteered to be liable or the debtors for that certificate, that was us screwing up the system. That's not how the system is supposed to work, but the system leaves it up to us. We are the, we're the ones with all the power. When we show up and we say, I volunteer to do this, the system is not allowed to say, are you sure? There's another option. No, the system's not allowed to do that. You pick door one or door number two. We all pick the wrong one. So again, by you coming oh, forward, and, yeah, by you coming forward and instantly putting that security certificate, um, I definitely recommend having the silver coin on it if you can. That's that's pretty important. If you can't come up with a silver coin between now and tomorrow uh, before your court, I would suggest going down to the post office at least and getting a stamp that has a monetary value that's preferably backed by silver or gold. That silver or gold helps to transfer or deliver that security interest to that new secured party. Again, that new secured party is now the new debtor. And the judge is going to resist you. He, he actually made a, another loved one just in, the, in Australia there yesterday or the day before or just very recently. He, he Again, he left the room three times. And he was threatening with, you know, uh, issuing a, a warrant for her arrest because he's testing her. He's just making sure that she can stand on her resolve and she has enough faith and enough belief in the limited uh, searching or, um, you know, acquiring knowledge and doing some research that she has in the last little bit. And he tested her and she passed. He literally said, okay, well, we're at the, you know, we'll, we'll adjourn this for four more weeks. And when you come back, he's actually giving her an opportunity to do some incredible things. So you would literally run into the same situation. He's probably going to threaten you with further arrest or detainment or even imprisonment, but you just got to stick to your guns because you know, as soon as you are not in possession of that security certificate, there's no way that they can issue a warrant for your arrest. It's impossible. They can't. He's going to make you think he can, and he's going to make you think, go ahead, go ahead, Uriel. I dare you to walk out of that courthouse. We're going to arrest you as soon as you walk out. He'll say that publicly, Listen, but he's just uh, testing you. He's just testing in you. In Israel, in Israel, the the, the difference bet between Israel and uh, different other countries, we are very young, a very young nation, right. and we don't have and we don't have also a constitution. constitution. We have we have law, basic laws. We have. Uh, uh, we have we have laws it's a uh, uh, like but we don't have um we don't have a constitution we don't have we have basic laws yeah basic okay. laws but uh, the thing is it, they made it they made it they made it uh, without a constitution that's why they can play inside they, it, it gives them more, more, more playing ground. Sure, sure. Yeah, That's the I thing. And I, and I don't know how, how does it works in Israel. Uh, we have to translate everything to, to Hebrew. Sure. And, and um, the language is different also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so we don't, day, we, don't have, we don't have something like whole, all caps. Okay. We don't gotcha. have it. So your name on the birth certificate, though, Uriel, it has the name and then it has a uh, registration uh, uh, number, and, right? And, and, and uh, again, uh, another thing, I was born in Uzbekistan. Okay. I was born in Uzbekistan and came to Israel. We immigrated to Israel when I was four. I'm also Jewish. That, that's why that, that I'm Israeli. Okay. okay. Uh, I was, I, sure. I came but, at yeah. 74 and okay. But you do have you do have type of uh, some type of identity document. I have, I have a birth, I have a, the original birth certificate from Uzbekistan. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's all you need to that's all you need to work with then tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. So do, um, I have to, do, do I have to translate it? Do I have to translate the, the birth certificate because it's in Russian? 
Yeah, you know what? Now, I, if they need it translated, they can worry about that. They can. That, that's yeah. That's not your. That's not your concern. Yeah. No. You're. I'm. I'm okay. delivering the security interest to the new secured party, Your Honor. And he's okay. going to say there's no procedure for this at law. But you know what? Yes, there is. There's. There's lots of that procedure at law, even with a, a new country. If you're operating on the birth certificate system, that's still the same commercial system that the entire globe is running on. Really, it yeah. technically yeah. is. So again, there'll be little nuances or slight differences between all the legislations in the different countries, but fundamentally, it's all the same stuff. Now, again, you're going to just present this to the court honorably. You're coming in good, uh, good faith and in peace. You yeah. know, we're not acting belligerently. And yeah. as soon as you say the word assignment, all the judges around the globe know what that means. You are you're attaching you're attaching the bad part of that certificate to the party that created it, and you're literally going to walk away with the good part of the certificate, the, the invisible yeah. part, the part that nobody really sees, and it actually doesn't exist until you claim it and you state for the record that it exists. So again, Ariel, all you really need to do tomorrow is get a maxim or two um, onto the record, and again, the first one being. Equity uh, shall impute an intention to fill an obligation. And the second one, if you had to go to another one as a default is, equity will not allow a trust to fail for want of trustee. This is very important because as soon as you put that certificate into the possession of the sheriff or the bailiff, a trust has actually arisen in the background. You don't really see it, but it has. Why? Because something has left your possession and it's now in the possession of another party. So a contract is now at play but you are the one in control of it because you're the one creating it. And the judge has no options but to hear your equitable defenses and your equitable remedies, although publicly he's going to deny it. He's going to say, oh, this, this court can't even hear that defense. And that's why you say, great, Your Honor. That's why I'm going to move this to the chancery listing as soon as you find me guilty anyway. But you're not finding me guilty. You're finding the certificate guilty, which is already in your possession. Right, bailiff? Yes, it is. In, so, the, in, the, second, in the second hearing I had, they tried to intimidate me and uh, told me that uh, they want to uh, uh, send me to, uh, uh, to check if I'm a uh, psychi psychiatric uh, yep. evaluation. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, I, said, and I said, okay, I'll say, uh, I'm... I'm, I'm I don't need it. I, you know, yeah. I can yeah. stand in court and, uh, and that's it. Uh, yeah, as, as a matter of fact, Uriel, I went for that psychiatric test. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, judge, a judge forced it. I, I couldn't get out of it. So I go and I sit down in the little room there in the back behind the courtroom and the doctor guy comes in and he's, he says, well, I was already in the courtroom and I heard everything you said and I'm very intrigued and wow, it sounds like, you know, you've done a lot of homework and this is all incredible stuff. And he was like, building it, building it, building it, building it. And I was ramping up, ramping up and enjoying this because I was I thinking, wow, finally someone understands what I'm, what, what I'm trying to say here. And this is what he says to me. He says, wow, you have a very good understanding of the legal system, don't you? And I said, yes, I do. And this is what he did. I knew right away I lost. As soon as I said I understood the legal system, I was done. Mm -hmm. I just admitted it and I just jumped right back in. What I needed to say was, no, as a matter of fact, I have a conflict and variance with the rules at law and generally in all matters where there is a conflict or variance between the rules at law and the rules of equity over the same subject matter, the rules of equity shall prevail. That's all you have to say. <laughs> That's all you have to say. So yeah. that's 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 the quote out of the Judicature Act, 1873 to 1875. That's the particular act that took equity and common law and merged it into the same courtroom. But they took your rights to get the equity away from you. So it's up to us to come to come back and to, to prove that it. we've done some stuff and that and we've transferred it. some interests and we've we've negotiated some instruments and we've attached value and we've created a security agreement and we've done all this stuff. So again, the, the judge is not going to want to uh, acknowledge this stuff publicly. Nope, because it would completely unravel the entire legal system. So technically, at the very best, like our uh, other loved one here the other night or the other day, when the judge says, fine, I'm just going to adjourn this for four weeks. And when you come back, we'll deal with this in a slightly different matter. That's a victory. Now she's going to do a whole bunch of stuff in the next four weeks that really sets the tone for how that next hearing is going to happen. And to be honest with you, that next hearing is going to go like this. 
the judge will come in publicly and say, ah, oh, there's a technical deficiency in the case and the Crown didn't do this or the Crown failed to do that. And I'm dismissing everything. But yeah. he has to come back with a public verdict to satisfy the public record. But truly in the background, it was all settled privately. And the Crown is standing there with their hands in the air. They don't know what the hell's going on. They've never heard this stuff before. But, uh, you know, it's just that this is so rare. So again, um, get that uh, that endorsement on the birth certificate, Uriel, uh, Uriel. It's basically just saying that you are delivering the, the security interest attached to this certificate and you are transmissing it or you are putting it into the possession of the secured party who it actually is the minister of finance or however your country defines the minister of finance you know it could be you know whatever that whatever their yeah, term the, is but you would literally the, write that yeah write that right on yeah, the certificate there is a, the, there is a guy in Australia that we are in, uh, in contact with. Uh, he says that uh, in every country you have something like 10 people, 10, 10, 10, 10 people or 10 entities that you can, you can uh, give them this, uh, this uh, um, how do you call it, affidavit? Yep. yep. Yeah. The, yep. In every country they have 10, pe 10 people that uh, deal with it, they, that know the, the, the stuff. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because because ninety nine percent of the people don't know about this stuff. No, no, it's it's probably even less than that. <laughs> Maybe less than that. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's okay. uh, that's, so yeah, Uriel, just to, just to recap real quick here, and then we'll get on to the next. Um, okay. Okay. Can I be in touch with you uh, after yeah. the? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Shoot me another email uh, or a correspondence off off camera here uh, in the background. And I will specifically okay. send you something uh, just so that you have something to work with uh, so okay. that you're not feeling like you're just kind of in the dark taking shots at something you're not sure. So, yeah, we'll get you set up there, my friend. Thanks. No Thank problem, you. Buddy. Excellent. I'm going, to un I'm going to unmute myself. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so thank you, Uriel, for sharing your story. So let's move on to Sharon because you're quite close. You're coming up here at the end of March. Um, we did have a question though. We just want to go back here. Okay. Can Yuri say everything at court in English instead of figuring out how to say in Hebrew? Um, yeah, I mean, if the judge is fine with hearing it in either language, um, if you can translate it on the spot and give it to him right there like that, hey, that'll fly. Um, but again, if if the birth certificate is in, an, in another language, you're just attesting to the fact, Your Honor, that this is what it says. And I'm not going to be burdened with bringing a translator here. Uh, if the court needs that, the, the court can satisfy that on its own accord. Thank you. And Allison, Serena, as well as, and especially Serena, thank you very much for your contribution on the chat. I can't uh, monitor it all. So if you guys know some answers and you're able to do that for me, I really appreciate it. So thank you. That's great. Okay. So Sharon, if you could please unmute yourself and we'll talk about your case, please. Okay. Um, so my case is on the 31st of March. I've not put in any paperwork yet. Um, still trying to figure it all out. Um, so I'm being charged with uh, driving without a license, without insurance, assault of a police officer, and no, no, not complying or something. Um, what I'd like to do is with, uh, I did not surrender my name whatsoever. Um, uh, they said they found me in the system uh, I told them that that was not me, that was a graven image. That's a paper, I'm right here. Um, nice. So I didn't, I didn't give, give anything at all to them. Okay. So I'm wanting to put on the back, and I took the bail paper, I asked her to hand it to me, not to slide it to me. Um, and I said, I take, I'm taking this as evidence um, because I was, I was assaulted as well from the officers. So I'm wanting to put on the back of that, that paper to put denied, because that's what the Bible says to do. If anyone accuses you, um, you know, we are to deny, uh, to condemn actually. Yeah. So that's what I'm wanting to put on the, the paper and send it back to them. Just put denied and condemn, condemned, condemned. Yeah and yep. send it back to them and see what that happens. But I don't know okay. what that would do. I, yep, I can jump in right here. Um, when scripture is referring to those types of uh, situations and predicaments, they are talking about the time when we as man and woman still actually had our equitable rights and we could enforce them as such. 
After 1933, uh, throughout the globe, when they switched our status on us from creditors to debtors, now we actually can't use ecclesiastical uh, stuff virtually at all in public courts until we do that birth certificate surrender. That's the single event that opens the door for us to now actually use scripture as defenses. If you don't do that, you're actually still serving two masters. You're confused. You're of unsound mind. The judge knows this. So he will deny you any remedy. But here's the catch. Once you do perfect that security or that birth certificate by putting your name on it, that short little paragraph in a silver coin, that puts you now, Sharon, into a position where you can actually accept that charge, that ticket, those instruments as grantee. Grantee is the position that comes before grantor. This is the stuff Dean and I missed 10 years ago. You can't be the grantor. You can't give something away until you can prove you actually have the thing. Grantee is the position that actually proves you have the thing. And what is the thing? The thing is both titles, the equitable title and the legal title. Why do you have both? Well, because you just claimed you did. No one can rebut that claim. The grantee is a very, very, very critical part of the components here. And again, that Dean and I missed it and the judges and the system are certainly looking for it. Okay, so what am I getting at? When you accept the instrument as grantee, you just perfected an interest in it. Now you can take that perfected interest and you can deliver or transfer the debt or the liability part of it to, again, the secured party. And you can do that right now. You can do it ahead of time and you can send it in with the birth certificate negotiated and assigned to the secured party, again, which is the Minister of Finance. Um, and you're going to put the court or the registrar or the clerk in a position where as soon as she sees an equitable claim or a security interest that's moving a title around, she has to or he has to give judicial notice of an, of an equitable estate. That means if you don't show up with the stuff, you actually can't get any remedy. It's impossible. You have to express it somehow. And by you sticking that little blurb on that birth certificate, that is the primary way to express that special interest. And the judge's hands are actually tied instantly. He can no longer say, Sharon, you're, not go you're now going to jail to service a debt that's attached to this instrument. It doesn't matter if you robbed a bank. It doesn't really matter if you got uh, stuck with uh, uh, some, uh, some CBD products in your trunk. None of the, 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 the legal charge it doesn't matter what it was. It can no longer stick to the woman. And the, that's the critical component, component that we're trying to deal with here in the background is moving that target off of our chest and we're putting it onto the party where it belongs. So with two weeks away, roughly you said the 31st, that gives us plenty of time to do two of things, like one of two things. We um, submit the plea in abatement. Okay, so I'll go into the plea of abatement real quick. The plea of abatement stops the at-law process in its tracks. It cannot move forward at all, period. It just cannot. It told the judge, hey, there's a superior claim here, and the jurisdiction that we're currently in cannot hear it, which is why the judges will often say, there's no process at law that can hear that defense. And you say, thank you for handing me my remedy, Your Honor. If this jurisdiction can't hear my defenses, let's move to the one that does. So find me guilty, do whatever you got to do, settle the titles publicly so that we can have our de novo rehearing, right, clerk? Yes. And here's my security interests. They're already in the possession of the sheriff, Your Honor. Let's do this. So we've had between James and Joshua here the other day, and then our other loved one here from the, uh, Australia as well just the other day. The judges are running out of the courtroom. Again, I don't want the judges running out of the courtroom, but they are actually doing that for a purpose. Again, like I said last night in the other meeting, once could be a mistake, twice could be a coincidence, but third time is probably true and just, and this person knows what the hell they are doing. So be prepared for the judge to literally leave the court three times. Why? Because when that security shows up and when the man or woman shows up, the man and woman and the person cannot be in the same courtroom at the same time. It's impossible. That's why they never ask for our ID going into court. Why? Because if the ID is in court, you can whip it out of your back pocket and say, well, here, this belongs to you. You're the debtor. You take it. And the judge literally has to, they can't deny it. Because that's the, that's the significance of the commercial world, the admiralty world in the background saying, yes, the courts and the, every judge of it must take cognizance or recognize an equitable estate. 
And again, the equitable estate happens the moment that you stick your name on that birth certificate with that little sentence or three and add a little bit of consideration to it, boom. You actually went from being the debtor, I don't like saying the creditor, but you're now standing in the shoes of the creditor and the judge has to play ball. So same thing, Sharon, don't worry the charges. That's all. It doesn't matter what the charges are. It's all dealt with the same systematic way. Uh, I'll help you in the background here, develop the paragraph for your birth certificate. So Sharon, where are you? I'm in Tasmania, but my birth certificate, I'm from Canada. Ah, perfect. We're pretty familiar with Canada systems. Okay, perfect. So I'll help you with all that. And again, we have two weeks. That's lots of time to get this stuff going. Um, I know recently we have been sending a lot of stuff to the Registrar General and land titles. Here's what's happening with land titles. The Registrar General is getting back to us and saying, hey, I don't have the authority to do this. That's perfect. Your Honor, give this guy the authority to do that. That's the whole purpose of the hearing coming up. And I'm going to be, I'm pretty confident that here's another equity maxim. Equity will take jurisdiction to avoid a multiplicity of suits. That means if 10 of you all apply your um, application or your paperwork to the courts relatively around the same time frame, literally the judge would probably hear all 10 of us all at the same hearing. It's going to be a private closed hearing. He knows because he's looking at the paperwork and it's virtually identi it's ident it's identical for all of us, literally. So equity will say, hey, everybody, come on in. It's almost like a class action lawsuit. Very similar. Hey, everybody, come on in. So We're there's, gonna Sorry? there's a lot of us in Tasmania doing it all and a lot of us on this Zoom call right now wow, yeah, that are fantastic. in Tasmania. Yeah. So again, strength. So are you saying we should do all our course, all our cases together in one? Do you think? Yeah, you're right. If you guys can coordinate and all sort of be ready, you can literally all go in at the same time, and the judge will deal with all of it all at once. That way, you're not wasting court time by 15 of you coming with 15 different cases. You all are bringing a. The, you're literally all bringing the exact same claim against the crown or the government of your particular country. There are the trustees holding our, call it our funds in the background. And the funds, again, it's, it's not that we have a, a bank account with a bazillion dollars in it. No, it's not that there's a dump truck shows up with full of gold and they dump it on your front lawn. No, it's not that either. But what you do have is the ability to say to your personal representative, hey, we need to appropriate or we need to appoint uh, $10 million to build a school over here. And they will go do it for you. So Again, the, the the economic reset that's coming down the pipe, the Nasera Jacera stuff, it's all going to blow everybody's minds what this is all going to turn out to be. But again, Sharon, um, just to, in closing here, yeah, don't worry. Uh, we'll help you with the blurb on the birth certificate. Uh, we'll get some specific legislation from Canada, uh, which is actually going to be applicable to the country oh. you're, you're in right now. So quoting the birth provinces legislation and getting it to work in Tasmania absolutely flies. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I'm from Ontario. So. Yeah. So yeah. Well, again, Chris, uh, Krista, and uh, Krista and Paul. You know, they've done some incredible stuff with uh, Ontario loved ones. And again, we're just blown away by uh, their contribution. And I get so jacked. You know, Dean and I get so excited when we when we see the fire starting to come back in everybody again. Again, I know when Dean and I kind of disappeared five six years ago. It was uh, we kind of left a lot of people hanging, and it was like, oh, what do we do? But you know, again. Uh, we've come back stronger than ever with a whole bunch more new stuff that is literally, again, I, to get back to the judges running out of the courtroom, we don't want the judges running out of the courtroom, but they do actually have to get up, leave probably three times to test you so that when they do come back the third or fourth time, they're ready to play ball. And now they'll start to listen to you. And at the very worst case scenario, they're just going to push the court date off to allow you an opportunity to bring either a counterclaim, a cross claim, or something from you as the plaintiff that's going to be way more powerful than what the crown was bringing against you initially. And that's. So, so can I, can I, cause I want to put a claim through of trespass and uh, that from the officers for the. Uh, for yeah. The you know what? Um, abuse that they did, or do I just drop all that and let it go? Yeah, you know what? I, I hate to burst your bubble on this one, Sharon, but in order to have the trust take true effect, and have its maximum capability, we actually have to do something called an indemnification against the trustees and either hold them harmless or basically relieve them from any liability from the past. And here's why. We took their certificate. We ran off and started doing some stuff with it that we never should have done. 
So when we are acting as sinners, debtors, actors in a movie script, volunteers, invalids, invalids <laughs> infants, wards, lunatics, all that stuff, we're actually not entitled to damages. We're actually not because we're the ones that actually put a wrinkle in the system. We're the ones that threw a monkey wrench into the spokes that mucked everything up. So because we're actually the ones doing the wrongdoing, we actually can't really come back now and claim damages. But equity is saying here, instead of having those damages, we're going to give you the access to the assurance fund of your particular province or country or wherever you are. That is code words for you're going to have access to your treasury account. So it's like, do you want to chase a cop for trespassing and try to, you know, give him a smack on the bum? Or do you want to just forget that stuff, move on, shake hands, say, I love you anyway, and tap into your birthright? If, if it were me, I would just go for the birthright. And you know what? Dean and I have been put through the ringer a fair bit when it comes to physical conflicts. I mean, I, I've been tasered. Uh, Dean's done some incredible stuff. And we actually, we have all this stuff. And we actually never even told the public about some of this stuff. I mean, I have the video of me getting tasered. It's pretty cool. And we've never released it to the public. And uh, we're actually thinking about doing that here pretty soon. I think you are. Just, yeah, just, <laughs> just cause, but um, so yeah, we have made an incredible amount of pro uh, progress, my friends. And again, um, when we're getting this stuff back from land titles um, with the electronic confirmations, those are some of the instruments that we really, really, really are going to be beneficial to roll into court to prove to the court, Hey, this is why I'm entitled to a hearing in chancery or a hearing in equity, because I can prove I am not in, I'm not in possession of that certificate. Ultimately, that's the most critical fundamental component of what we're trying to do here is prove that we actually don't have our birth certificates anymore. That's it. Okay. Do, and one, one, one more thing. Do we also, do I need to hand in my license that day as well? Like, should I put my, because my license is suspended and I won't be doing it again because now I know the truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do yeah. I send that in as well? Sure, absolutely. Yep, go ahead. Yep. It does, it's not really serving you uh, if it's suspended. And here's the other cool part you are still in possession of the birth certificate and the driver's license came from the birth certificate. So even though they took your driver's license away, you still have the fundamental document that creates the driver's license. And that is what we're dealing with. That's what's going to get us through the door and change everything in the background. So, so there you go. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Excellent. Thank you, Sharon. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to move on to Andreas. We go back, I think, quite some time with Andreas, uh, yeah. especially with Darren. So yeah, you do great. have a pending court case come up and we had our, don't worry, we had our, our eyes on you. We're going to make sure we took care of you today. So here you yeah. go. He's all yours. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Um, how you going, Darren? Been That's a while? Good, good. good. Yeah. <laughs> I've still got this special notice that we created fucking years ago uh, with Dean. Okay. Um, and I had a good result with that. Um, I had the, the Crown Prosecutor spinning around in his chair, losing his shit because of what was said in it. So I'm not sure if you remember, <laughs> but uh, I think this was at the start of when you you started putting together all this equity stuff. And um, and I'm, um, yeah, gratefully shared it with me. You know? yeah. And I put it to action that time. Now, could, could I use this same notice? Because I, the way I went in about it, I'm comfortable <laughs> doing it where it's not going to be a battle or a fight. And I know that the magistrate submitted to me by my authority, by the way, I actually um, uh, um, expressed it. Um, and I've still got it. I don't know if I can share it here. Can I just read it out maybe? And yeah, give it, man. That's cool, yeah. So it was a special notice. And um, what we come up with last was, uh, I'm here by special private appearance. I'm not sure if we have to use that anymore. I don't think we do. But uh, on the top was a special notice uh, uh, as, a, as a header. Yeah. Um, there's a conflict that variants at law. I require this to be moved to chambers as this, as this is a private trust matter and cannot be discussed in a public venue. Um, my equitable defences and rights are not recognised here. I will not act for the state legal person in any way. I will not volunteer to be trustee for the state legal person. And then I ripped out a maxim. Equity, equity will not aid a volunteer. And then... He said, what is that, Marina? I said, don't you do that to me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Just mute okay, Serena. we're just gonna mute that, <laughs> okay. and we're gonna rewind. Yeah. Okay. and then I ripped out the, the, the maxim. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Just a little reminder, please, everybody, make sure you're on mute or we hear everything. Okay, and it's recorded <laughs> forever. Okay, thank you. 
and then and then I followed, but and then that caused some controversy uh, controversy in the court, and I really had to rip out a maxim for her to really put her in line, yeah. and she did. And then I said, if I'm forced to be surety, then I exercise my right to subrogate and I exchange the implied rights of the debtor for the rights of the creditor. I now appoint the Crown Prosecutor and I got his name before I went in there as a signee. Perfect. And yeah, and then I said, and then the magistrate started trying to question me. I said, equity will not allow a trust to fail for the one of a trustee. I said, Your Honor, I have a document here for you to, to, to take. And that was my birth certificate. <laughs> and yeah, and as soon as she got that, she looked at it and she was like, can I keep this? And I said, yeah, that's yours, Your Honor. It's not mine. Wow. Nice. Yeah. But I don't know if she got value from that, what she did with that. Um, yeah. I know they can take whatever they can from that if she... But there was no signatures in that on it. Yeah. Um, and then I said, I'm here for settlement and closure. Now I demand full accounting and I claim this court file to be private trust res. Perfect. Uh, by, by Andreas Grantee Air. So as you, know you said what? before about being grantee... Yeah. You know, I actually remember that notice because I helped Dean write it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was I was on video call with both of you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So yeah, that's you know that that is so loaded with remedy, my friend. It's not even funny. Fun. Here's where it's, here's where it's deficient. What I'm asking, what I'm requiring settlement. Here's why I'm requiring settlement because I have indeed assigned the security interest to the new secured party, the new yeah. registered owner, the debtor. Your Honor, yeah. that's the evidence. Once that is on the record and it's been transferred. Now you can come and claim your settlement. You can't settle it quite yet until it's assigned. And I actually remember drafting that with Dean to help you out back yeah. a little while ago. And yeah. that's that's the little piece that it's missing. And to be honest with you, my friend, that's only because I kind of discovered that little piece here, you know, in the last little while. So, yeah. so it's, you, it's so not you, that we were, yeah, it's not that we were trying to shortchange you. But again, no, no, no. Yeah, left you me for five years. <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> when you show up, when you show up by special private appearance, and you're telling the court, "Hey, hey, Your Honor, there's a confusion of titles here." The yeah. judge has to say, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, yeah. Let me show you, Your Honor. Blah. Yeah. But again, hey. Your Honor, I recommend that you seal this court because, again, I do have private proprietary trust materials that I don't want uh, made viewable to the public for public consumption. That's a big no-no when it comes to trust law. And yeah. again, James, uh, the other day, when he requested that the judge seal the case and the judge says no, the judge denied it. So that's why I'm thinking, you know what, that's why James was a little bit justified in his behavior there by literally stripping the judge and making her run out of the room three times. You know what? It's almost like she kind of asked for it because she should have respected his wishes and sealed the court, but she didn't. And again, this is where we're going to go through the odd little tumbling process where, where the system is catching up to where we are. We're showing up pulling what I call little sneak attacks where we actually don't even give the judge any notice that we're going to be doing this. We just show up to court with perfected security interests and security agreements and special affidavits and putting the sheriff into possession. That is such a whirlwind for the judge to deal with loved ones. It's crazy to the point where I don't even like to do it. But again, if you're walking into court tomorrow, you kind of don't have a chance or an option, but you're, you know, um, Sharon two weeks away and, and, and others here. And, and, you know, we have time to, kind of remedy these situations with a little bit more tact and honor and class. And that's actually going to not put the judge in the hot seat, not cause them to jump up and run out of the courtroom. You know, it's just going to be more favorable if we do it, settling it privately by sending in these correspondences and saying, Hey, here's my cross claim. Here's me coming as a plaintiff. Here's me coming with my special equitable stuff. And I know you have to hear it now. And you'll be shocked at the level of respect and uh, dignity that's shown back to us in the reciprocation of it. Because again, I've said this a few times, this fundamentally is the most honorable thing a man or woman can do. Big time. And yeah. I, I noticed in saying that, uh, Darren, yeah. um, I was late that day, right? And yeah. um, I missed the first hearing. <laughs> so they put me into the second hearing, right, of the yeah. day. And they waited, waited and I, was, I had my phone and everything on record, ready to record the whole thing because I was going to record and show you guys, you know? Yeah. And my battery ended up going dead because they made me wait to the last person. <laughs> now, as a tactic, I would recommend that because there's yes. no there's no witnesses yeah. in there. Yeah, there's you know no what? Media yeah. and 
we're not jeopardizing our equitable um, our, our equitable rights and claims in front of other people where we're going to go, oh, hey, what the fuck's he doing? And start yeah, and getting yeah, eat yeah. The poor, right? I totally agree. And they've yeah. been pushing us to the last case of the day for shit almost 10 years now. And we didn't yeah. really understand why until, again, recently, where we're thinking, okay, great. You could literally turn around and you could state for the record, Andreas, hey, uh, uh, I'm, I'm noticing the court that there is no other person attending the courtroom. Therefore, I'm at will and I'm at liberty. I'm just going to proceed as if this is a court of equity and just let it rip. I didn't have to do that. What happened was, I, as soon as I said, I requested this to be moved to chambers, she goes, ha, ha, ha. She goes, you're in my chambers. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, are you sure? I think there's still... Are you sure? She goes, what? You want to go into my office? She goes, it's a bit small for that. She goes, you're in my chambers. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? Uh, Andreas, not Mr. Prentice. Andreas. And then after, as soon as I said that, she's, Andreas, what would you like me to do? <laughs> See? And the, you know what? That's ultimately... I didn't have the knowledge then. So yeah, we didn't have the knowledge. Now I do. <laughs> and you know what? We've actually heard that a few times now where we actually got into chambers and the judge says, okay, the judge says, okay what's the remedy you're seeking? And our exactly. friends that went into court actually said, I don't know. And I, I froze. I froze. I, she goes, and I remember where I froze. She goes, oh, what do you mean by full, of, full accounting? She goes, what accounting? And I, was, and I thought about it after, and I realized when I was walking out. But I just said, you know what? Aren't you, the, aren't you the magistrate? I don't need to educate you on what, you need, what accounting is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> or just rip it back on her. Yeah, and you know what? And here's two answers to that question. The first one is, an account, a full accounting on the equitable side is sequestering, marshalling, segregation, and tracing. Those are the financial wordings that are used to go and find all the instruments that you've ever touched over the course of your lifetime, added value to, and now all those rents, accruals, interest, monies, profits, proceeds, all come back to you. And your yeah. honor, if that's not the answer you're looking for, I don't know, but I do know no trust can fail for want of trustee. Exactly. So therefore, you deal with that. Exactly, and you know, I I know, and I stand firmly. Like I went in there blind, listening to, you, to listening to you and, and and Dean. You know, I didn't have any knowledge of whatever was going on, and that's why I'm still today, and my loyalty is with you guys. You know, and I've got to express that to everyone. Like what what Darren is saying is legit, and it is what it is because I've done it, yeah. <laughs> and I can't express that to you. There's nothing to fear. Trust me. Yeah. Just go yeah. in there with your pride and just with no fear and fight these people like you're gone yeah. to war. Yeah, and that's what we want to see. And, 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 here's, and here's the cool, when you just mentioned the word fight, here's the best fight we could ever bring to the table. It's coming in peace. Exactly. <laughs> That's the exactly. best one. Exactly. And you know what? I was lucky enough. She didn't leave the venue. She didn't get up. She didn't move. She was, she was a cool magistrate. I must say, she done her job. And they are, you know, they, they and are out there. Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah, they're great around there. there. Hopefully I'll have her Friday. <laughs> I knew she was honorable in what she was doing. And, you know, you do get bad, you, you, you do get bad magistrates. You know, you sure. get ones yeah. that will just not listen to you, ones that don't want to obey, ones that don't want to recognize what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and you know what? You're, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I've, you know, we've actually seen it in the legislation where the legislation actually refers to a good judge would and yeah. a good judge should. And it's like, okay, the fact that they're even putting the word good in there good. implies <laughs> that there are bad ones. Yes, that's that's exactly right, and you know, I, and I've witnessed it. So I think moving forward from here, if I just perfect my certificate, which is something I haven't done yet, I've got my point, I've got an understanding of what to put on there. Yeah. Uh, maybe if I can run through it with you, you know, before the end of the week or something like that, yeah. and just perfect that. Yeah, um, is is giving it to the bailiff or the sheriff? What as soon as it get ha hands to that magistrate, is that yep. the idea of what we want? Is that yes. the goal we want? Yes, and here's why. Your Honor, would you mind from this honorable court issuing a writ of execution, a writ of delivery? Oh, those are magic words for the sheriff. Those special writs are the commands that command the sheriff to take that security and do something with it. Yeah. A, a writ of execution, a writ of seizure. Here's the cool thing. A writ of seizure, he's actually capturing the security interest. He's literally putting it in a net or in a box. He literally has custody of it. He's literally taking care of it. He takes that seizure and he goes to the court and he says, uh, hey, your honor, I have seized an interest here. What do you want me to do? And then the judge is going to say, well, under another writ of execution, enforce a writ of delivery and deliver it to the securities intermediaries. 
So again, writs of seizure, writs of ex execution, and writs of delivery. Those are the three. So if you throw out any one of those three, especially the writ of seizure, and Your Honor, under that writ of seizure, can you please uh, compel the sheriff to deliver the interest for me? That's all it needs to be. Again, I know I talk super technical and stuff all the time, but that's just because I've read too many <laughs> legislations. You know, it's just, I can't shut it off anymore. I'm trying to bring the scope and the down, but... <laughs> You that's why you put this up. Yeah, right. And, and again, you know, we're actually getting better at it. And and again, we are making progress. And like you said, you're gonna once you bring that certificate of security in, and you you specially reposit it, not even a deposit. Special deposit was a thing eight ten years ago. But check into the wording of what reposit means. It's actually lodging a financial asset with land titles versus registering it again. Because when we register it the context or the terms and the conditions in the background get skewed because the crown starts to get their fingers in there. And that's part yeah. of the stuff that we want to try to, you know, yeah. be careful with, be a little bit mindful with. So again, I know it's, I know it's a lot of slippery wording, but we are still trying to boil it down and condense it and, 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 and make it more digestible for the consumers here at this level. But again, the courts and the magistrates and the clerks, they're starting to recognize this stuff and they're starting to play ball. And it's only yeah. taken 20 years, but I'm I'm glad, you know, that we, we're finally arriving. So oh, it's all going to happen, go. you know, like, manifest yeah, itself. Sure, for sure. You know, the more energy we get to it, the more we're going to create a big, big, big movement. So yeah, for um, sure. Make a lot of change. All right. Yeah, well, yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll focus on I'll focus on doing that um that, that perfecting that interest then on my on yep. my I'll write it yep. on my so on my on the original. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Must be the original. Correct. Put it in an envelope. Uh, yeah, stick it in there for sure. Yep. Yep. Because as long as I can hand that to the magistrate, the job's done. Yep. Um, the sheriff bank or not. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, I know James, because it's odd though, because the, the magistrate or the judge with James the other day, he was sitting on one of the originals and he was kind of refusing to acknowledge it. So in one of the breaks between what, uh, the one time when the judge left the room and he came back, James and Josh and, you know, Jenny there, they went back into that private room and they whipped out another original and they perfected it right then and there. And then they yeah, went so back into the courtroom and submitted a second one. And well, now that trapped the judge. The judge couldn't get out of that one. But yeah, but the thing is, though, the one that I gave the magistrate was a copy. It wasn't okay. signed. It was just one front face of the, of the, of the so now, what if I got a copy of what the perfected one is, send the perfected one to the financial minister, whoever it is, minister of finance. Absolutely. Show yep. it as the copy of that. So yep. then they can see, oh, this is what's been done yep. because I don't trust the courts. I've handed documents to them before the courts and they say they haven't got nothing. Uh, now, that's impossible. It doesn't, you know what yeah. I mean? They're, 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 dodging, they're trying to dodge the bullet. But yeah, for sure, for at sure. At least I know this way it's, it shows that this is direct. This has been sent to this person here. This yep. is evidence of it being sent. This, yep. is, my, this is my notice. Attach yep. that to that. Yep. This is what's going to be happening. Done. Yep. And try to get that into court sooner than later. Again, I... Uh, only do the sneak attack if you're walking into court tomorrow morning. If you have a week or two weeks, yeah, do your best to get that stuff to the judge as soon as you can. Because that's okay. actually... I don't, I don't know who the judge... You don't know who the judge is, though. That's the thing. Yeah, you know what? Just just uh, attention clerk or attention registrar, um, RE court file number. Just They'll know what to do with it. All you have to do is distinguish whether it's criminal or civil. Attention... Criminal. Attention clerk at criminal or attention clerk oh, at yeah. civil regarding the following court file number. Please notice... You don't even have to use the word, please. Take notice, take, take notice for granted of the following. And you can literally, just in a memorandum, just do a few points. One, yeah. two, three, four, five points. Number one being you have a conflict with the rules of that law. Why? Because you've assigned a security interest and put the secured party in, into possession of it. Well, that's going to certainly kick a door open. And then it's just a matter of a couple of remedy type blurbs where, you know, you're seeking, uh, you're praying for relief, which is accounting, special um, uh, performance, and yeah. an injunction. Uh, the injunction is super, super important. That yeah. literally stops the crown from proceeding against you, period. Well, as soon as, as soon as, I remember as soon as the magistrate said, how do you play? Because like, I shut up at the beginning. And she's like, how do you play? Yeah. And, and, and you know what the like, answer for that? You know what the answer for that is now, right? I'm, I, well, I, last time I said, I'm not here to play. I'm here to subrogate. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, there, there, that's a good one. <laughs> and when she says... What you know? What plea would you like to let you? Would you like to enter? Um, one in a, one of abatement, please, to the general to the process generally considered. Okay. How do you plead? You don't say guilty or not guilty. 
No, no. Uh, my, my plea is my plea is one of abatement to the process generally considered. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, as soon as I said sub, uh, I like to, uh, I'm not here to plea. I'm here to subrogate. That's that, when the crown started spitting in his chair. That's deadly. Happy. That is that is yeah. so deadly. Oh. <laughs> and again. <laughs> Now, if you, if you had just already had an original on you or that original instead of a copy in the courtroom, you could have literally technically assigned it right then and there. And yeah. again, that's the missing that's the missing component. When Dean and I were helping you with that notice yeah. a year and change ago. I remember you were mentioning it, mentioning the silver coin and stuff that back then, but like yeah. I didn't really understand what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. But so so there you go. So and again, you have another yeah. opportunity to smash one out of the park here. So yeah, yeah. You're gonna do uh, awesome. I could just get some notes, maybe just some, just touch some, some bases, and I'll just start studying that and just get get ready for that, and I'll prepare another notice and yeah, I've done that. With yeah, absolutely. And again, like I said, uh, fire the documents, um, or I'll find you in the groups on divergence yeah. there, yeah. and yeah. I'll start, I'll start dropping um, correspondences into the groups, also yeah. on the main thread. Uh, to start yeah. satisfying any, you know, the, the primary questions. And then when, yeah. as you guys have specific questions, yeah, just fire them at us on the Divergence platform there. That's probably the best way to do it. And then that way everybody else can see the questions because a lot of people have very similar circumstances, very similar, yeah. you know, situations where we're actually all feeding off of the knowledge that we're bringing forth here as a group. So, uh, well, yeah, I, I can do Sorry? Well, so I was going to say the whole criminal procedure of whatever is going through criminal court, it's all the same principles at the it's all the same day, it? because yep. it's, all, it's all corrupted the whole that whole yep. that whole side of things isn't legit so like yeah, yeah. um i guess we're all in the same ballpark there when everything gets trialed through a, a criminal procedure yeah. so you betcha yeah. you yeah, betcha yeah. all right well yeah, my friend, on, I'll, yeah, my friend I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll field uh yeah contact me on the side here and uh we'll yeah. i'll field any other questions we'll fine tune the game for you here in the next little bit and we'll uh we'll get you all set up uh, awesome good to chat to you guys all right thanks again much Thank love. You guys. Excellent. Yeah. We're going to jump over to Almo here quick. I know he's got another meeting scheduled. So Almo, are you still here with us, please? Hey there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having us and all of your knowledge. That's amazing. Oh, thank you, Almo. Sorry? Can, we see you? Can we see you possibly, please? Oh, so yeah. Just a moment. Up. Yeah. I had a problem with the new antivirus and I, I think I figured it out. Here you there go. You go. Excellent. Thank How you, you doing? Much. Right on. Here my you uh yeah and i was spoken just with uh with with uh zev and james i'm in contact with them we we do a lot of stuff uh together awesome. um generally speaking what happened with me i i we're doing like those role plays to know how to talk with police and everything and um it just went wrong like i was questioning them after like maybe 30 minutes uh, and then they just said enough of it <laughs> so yeah. they just took me away and you know you know how it goes yeah and um yeah so it, it wasn't the nicest experience and um yeah so i was just wondering now because um they sent me a penalty of driving without a license even though i stated that i'm traveling and all of that and um and what happened more is the day after I went to write a stat deck that I presented the license and they still sent me the, the notice. Okay. So basically, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much covered in court. Uh, so I, we, we send a request for, for court and we serve the cop with, uh, with affidavit saying all those things, you know, the living man, I'm not belligerent, all of those stuff. Yeah. Uh, with all the evidence and incidents of, of what happened as well with uh just a moment with notice of uh conditional acceptance upon proof of claim and notice of prohibition in terms of engagement with a scheduled fee so okay. it, it was all served and it's gonna be we gave them 28 days to to try to rebut that and it's okay. gonna be unrebutted before the court date sure. um sure. yeah so look for 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 the case, um, I wasn't born here in Australia, um, not a citizen, not a resident. Um, and I've actually have few citizenships and already now is, is gonna be shipped to me by, by Express, uh, the birth certificate that I have, but it's not from the place that I was born. It's okay. from, from Europe. Okay. uh because this is the one that, that i can have the the closest so yeah. and I, I did apply for the one that i was born from okay. um but but I, i'm not sure i'm gonna get it on time the other one i'm pretty sure i'm gonna get it in time 
Sure. Yeah. So what, whatever one that you're in possession of right now, that's, that's the one you want to be operating with. That's, that's good enough. You can express your intent right there. And if there's something technically wrong in the background, the system will actually catch it. And then worst case scenario, the judge has to get involved and do a little investigating, but that's actually their job in the background anyway. As a matter of fact, that's how it works in Germany, I believe, is each judge actually takes it upon himself to go do investigating in the case rather than relying on the prosecutor to do it. It's kind of a weird way to do it. But anyway, so you're, you're looking at something similar here where your birth certificate that you have is, is fundamentally good enough to get done what you need to get done. Um, the authenticating process or the endorsing process that I'm talking about is where you add your signature to it. Um, just a, a few sentences describing what you're doing. Why are you putting your name on your birth certificate? Well, here's why. You're just kind of just giving it to them real briefly. So again, it doesn't matter what the issuing state or province or country was of the birth certificate. You can literally walk into any courthouse on, on the planet and negotiate that instrument because the system fundamentally in the background is all the same. So as soon as you're not in possession of that security certificate means you're not liable for it. And any proceedings being brought against that certificate are no longer attached to you. They're now attached to the new secured party, the new debtors, the new registered owners eventually, but the judge or the court is gonna actually help you with that registering process. Because you know what? I've been doing it for a long time and it's not easy to figure out how to do. And I don't expect all of you and all of the others out there to go through the same kind of crazy hoops that we have to get the same remedy we have now when we can just say, hey, your honor, I know that this and this and this need to be done. So would you please just make sure that the trust is satisfied? Make sure that there is a trustee appointed. That's an incredible remedy. As soon as a new trustee is appointed, that means, Elmo, that you're not the trustee. That's where the subrogation comes in that Andreas was just mentioning. Your Honor, the trust is valid. It's before the court, although I can't disclose the particulars because they're private. However, I am going to require that this court appoints a new trustee. I'm not walking out of here until I have confirmation of that. Yeah. I, I was just wondering if, if I submit one certificate from one country, is it perfecting all the rest of them because yes, as yeah, i said i have yeah, an, another yeah, nationality yeah, and yeah, i'm actually yeah. supposed to get another one soon <laughs> like another citizenship from another one yeah, you know yeah. then they're gonna create another birth certificate so we'll have three birth certificates yeah. so Crazy. but no you're right yeah yes. all, they're, they're all connected in the background yeah the the commercial okay. system guys it's so so effective it's so um comprehensive that all that stuff is managed in the background. That's why there's an army of those types of people in the background managing all this stuff. It's a, it's, it's a mountain of paperwork. And I thought we do a lot of paperwork, but you know, there's, there's others out there that do more than we do. And all I'm saying here, guys, is there's going to come a time where I'm in, I'm vesting the security interest in new trustees, your honor. That word vesting is global. Every judge knows what that means. The word vesting means that you're, you're, you're essentially taking stuff and you're attaching it to something that can deliver it to somebody else. If I have a bunch of stuff, but I don't have a boat to send it across the river, I'm kind of screwed. I can't really get my documents across the body of water. So you need the boat. What's the boat? The boat is the trust. That vehicle put into the possession of the sheriff or the bailiff is the mechanism that delivers it to the new secured party that the judge and the courts will help you with filing all this stuff at land titles. Why? Because your honor, that's trusty work. I'm not even going to pretend to know how to do all that stuff. That's what they're for. My part of the deal is done. My part's done. My hands are clean. I'm no longer in possession of that silly thing. Therefore, I can literally sit down and put up my feet, your honor. Why? Because I know no trust can fail for one trustee. Unless you're going to disclaim the trust. And again, guys, back to James's uh, incident there with the courts a few days ago. How many times did he ask the judge if he or she disclaims the trust? He must have asked 25 times. And the judge ducked it every time. The judge, judge did not answer it at all. Because as soon as they do, catastrophic events happen publicly. They cannot acknowledge these trusts publicly. Nope, they won't which is why James was forcing the issue, you know, uh, but again, 
getting this stuff settled privately, he will entertain your private equitable remedies. Come on into chambers ahead of your public court hearing. We'll deal with this now so that when the public court hearing happens, you don't even have to go. It's dealt with. Yeah, so basically, if, if I'm going to perfect now, and even if, if the embassy of the country that I was born in, which is not going to be the, uh, probably not going to be the one that I'm going to submit, uh, if I receive the birth certificate afterward, it doesn't consider like I'm on the possession, right? Because it's already been perfected. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, perfecting it is great, but you're still in possession of the instrument. And again, the possession component completely dictates how the rest of the game is going to get played. So if you, if you perfect this stuff, but you don't tell anybody about it, or you don't bring it into court, or you don't give it to the sheriff, or you don't tell the judge about it, you know, it, it won't serve you, right? We have to make them known that, hey, I did this, and I'm putting it into their possession. Yeah, the, my, my question was just a, a bit a bit different. Is um, I meant, for example, if I if I perfect the European one, and after the court, because I already ordered it from the place that I was born, I'm gonna receive the one from the place that I was born. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm on on the possession of it, right? Because I already right. done the perfection with the European one. That's right. Yeah, that that single event of perfecting okay. covers everything. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And ultimately here, friends, at the end of the day, the uh, vital statistics or land titles or the courts, they're actually going to want us to bring any duplicate titles or any other uh, copies of those certificates and bring them to the court so that they can adjust them. And what they're going to do is they're going to take those certificates, they're going to cancel them, or they're going to correct them, and they're going to issue new ones. The new ones are going to be the ones that have all of our, for a better lack of terms, all of our special standing and status attached to it. And that's ultimately the one we want. And again, uh, you may have re uh, recall me referring to that as that's the certificate of indefeasible title. That's the one that cannot be monkeyed with. Nobody can attach debt to you ever again. Yeah. And when I, when I send the envelope with the perfected uh, birth certificate, is that fine if I also put all the, the evidence of the court that I submitted to the cop or, or should I not touch you that? Can if, yeah, you can if you want. You can literally attach affidavits. You can attach exhibits. You can do it all now. Or you can just send in your version of the events or your claim. Again, whether it's going to be a cross-claim, a counter-claim, or you coming as a plaintiff, bringing your own motion. As long as it's something where you are coming as the plaintiff, because that's you bringing your jurisdiction, and you bringing your jurisdiction is equity. Unless we bring that in as the plaintiff, equity actually can't really get into the courtroom. The, the prosecutor sure isn't going to bring it. Nope. Yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No problem. So yeah, Elmo, if you have any other questions, again, like I'm just going to say, we'll just leave that as a blanket comment. Uh, as we're transitioning to, to other uh, members here, uh, feel free to keep you know sending us uh, questions and stuff particulars in the background here on the, on the Divergence platform or, or whatever's convenient. But we recommend that so that, again, like I said, everybody else can see it and learn from it. So that's going to be our best teaching tool. Yeah. So. And we do have quite a few questions coming in on the chat as well. I'm not ignoring them. I'm just trying to get to the cases right now. A lot of the questions coming in are have been covered in our previous um, recordings on YouTube. So I will not be covering those ones. It's just for the sake of being able to just address questions that um, we haven't covered a couple, several times. Okay. So um, I will be, if we have time at the end, I'll go back and circle around. Otherwise, you know, we'll go through the chat and we'll pick out the main questions uh, and we'll formulate another question and answer around that for you guys. Okay. So we can go to Frank now, please. How's it going, Where's Frank? There's Frank in the house. <laughs> there How are you guys? Hello. Hello. Very good. Hello. Hi, we can hear you. Oh, good, good, good. Yes, um, I've got caught on the 25th of, of March. Um, I've, I've, uh, I've already sent in an affidavit okay. as well. Um, I did that before I discovered you guys. Okay. Um, yeah, where, where do I go from here? Should I just... Have you, Frank, have you, have the, has the court asked you to enter a plea yet? Yeah, they, they did. I said no plea. So I've, got, I've moved it actually to a contest mention. Good enough. 
will help you draft that plea in abatement. That plea in abatement, friends, that is so deadly to any case coming at you on the public side. It literally stops it. And when it stops it, that's what we want. And that abatement is literally a page long. And I believe Luann, uh, a good friend of mine from back in the day in Winnipeg, I believe I saw her on here. I think she's still on here. But anyway, Luann and her husband uh, were, were firsthand witnesses to that abatement working because I believe it, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the first time that we ever tried the abatement process. And within a day or three, and Luann and Ken would confirm this, they checked the court computers and the court computers came back saying that something is in the vault, see security alert. And back, this happened five, six, five ish years ago. And we didn't, we didn't quite, I didn't quite comprehend what that really truly meant. What it meant was there's a security interest that has been moved or transferred or delivered, and it's actually in the vault. But now what do you want us to do? So the abatement stops it, but it doesn't finish it. You, now you got to come in and close the thing, capture the interest, move the debt around, run away with your equitable title and interest, make sure that those new appointed trustees are in place, make sure that the executors are there, make sure that the court appoints a personal representative for you. Like there's a list of stuff that has to happen now after the abatement. And unfortunately, back in the day there, when I was um, assisting Ken and Luann, I didn't have the knowledge that I do now. Uh, I didn't know how to perfect that security interest. I didn't know how to deliver it to the security party, but here we are. But again, so the point here was, is that that abatement people is critical for any, any case coming at us right now. As soon as the judge sees that, they know they got to hit the emergency break, but they're going to be very quiet. They're actually going to even suggest that, yeah, I might have this abatement, but I can't hear it or I can't do anything with it. And we change the game when we say, well, fine, if you can't deal with that because of the abatement, here's the security certificate with the interest attached to it. And oh, look, I've also included the valuable consideration, Your Honor. Do you want to see my security agreement that supports all this with the affidavit here or in chambers? Yeah. It's just asking questions. So what happens if you refuse to enter a plea and the magistrate enters one for you on your behalf? Well, the best plea to enter is one of abatement to the process generally considered. Actually, that is your plea. And the judge is going to say, I can't hear that. Again, for the record, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Go ahead, repeat it. Well, Your Honor, for the record, I would like to enter a plea of abatement to the process generally considered. And the judge is going to start doing, rah, 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 rah. right? They might start having little tantrums. They might start, you know, getting a little bent because they know you're not going to budge. And they know you're about to put them in the hot seat. And they actually don't know how much you do. So it kind of turns into a bit of a conundrum, which is why, why, again, I don't like the sneak attacks unless we absolutely have to do it that way. But when you come with clean hands and you come with some integrity and you're starting to settle this stuff ahead of time by putting the judge in possession of those original documents, putting him in possession of the affidavit that explains it all, wrapping it in your own motion, uh, what are the titles or what are the captions of the motions? Like, Darren, what is it you're talking about? What, what motion do we even bring before the court? I will post on the Divergence platform several options that we can create to recover our interest on land. That is fundamentally what we're doing. What is the land? If you actually go to the land titles definitions of the word land, it's not just the dirt. It's a whole bunch more stuff. They're talking corporeal and incorporeal hereditaments. They're talking about ideas. They're talking about uh, intellectual property. They're talking about tangible and intangible. There's, there's the, the scope of what can be defined as a right or an interest is virtually endless. There are so many possible combinations, it's ridiculous. So they only, they only need to see one to get the ball rolling. Well, Your Honor, as the plaintiff, I desire to uh, seek remedy of a property interest attached to a financial asset. That is what the term plaintiff actually means. So if you're not seeking to recover on a property interest attached to a financial asset, you have no business being in court. You have no idea what's going on. And the judge knows that. The judge actually doesn't want to hear that, hey, my brother Bob over there, he stole my lawnmower last week and I need a new lawnmower. What the judge wanted to hear was, Oh, Your Honor, I came to court today to perfect my security interest in a birth certificate that I 
abandoned at birth. And because it was an escheated estate, my parents never told me about it, but I just happened to discover this recently, Your Honor. And I know I'm doing a moral adverse claim, and I know that court will take cognizance or, or recognize my equitable estate. The judges have to, they're mandated to, they can't just ignore that stuff. No, they have to. So the judge wants to hear, hey, don't worry about your lawnmower, correct the sin that's attached to your name. Get back into the book of life. Stop being a debtor. If you weren't a debtor, you wouldn't care about your neighbor stealing your lawnmower. As a matter of fact, you'd walk over there and say, hey, do you need the weed whacker too? <laughs> different set of, different set of life. You know, so an entirely different paradigm. Entirely different. Okay, Frank. Yep. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Lots so, of Frank. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, where can I, where can I access all the info? Yeah, you know what? Again, come to the Divergence platform, um, sign up there, I'm and the admin team. You, oh, sorry, you are? Yeah. Yep. Okay, then just send me a, send me a, hey, Darren, this is Frank from the chat the other day. Uh, hook me up with the documents. And literally, I can do a crash version of our uh, process, and I can give you the nuts and bolts to get done exactly what you needed to get done for your, your case coming up. Um, I'm going to put up the divergence email that you guys can send that to because I'm not going to reroute everything to him because his inbox is already stuffed. So if you guys could send it um, to divergence.com uh, or divergence at gmail.com, that would be great. I will type it in the, the, the chat as well. You can find it on our website, Facebook. I mean, um, if you guys can go there, that would be much better but yeah um okay so we're gonna go back we're not gonna thank you these questions yeah, no here. problem frank yeah so go ahead, yeah go ahead fire your questions i'll, I'll help you on the we'll sidelines here yep okay Thanks. and i wrote down what you needed as well frank so i'll make sure but yes please email us and then yes we've kind of got a team and we just kind of spread it out and diversify it so we can get back to everybody okay so thank you frank that was wonderful so we can please move on to lindsay k oh sorry linda k if you can please unmute yourself, we'd love to see and meet you, please. Linda? Linda? <laughs> oh, I think this is Linda. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, oh, there yeah. we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry. Um, just that I've got my, my daughter home. I've just had to rush and get her from school. She's still oh, on the school bus. So oh. I've had a bit of a morning. So um, no she's actually here. So I wanted to actually talk about her case and her father, but she's here. So it's pretty, pretty tricky. Okay. Um, so I've got, um, I'll go down in my Wi Fi. I've got federal court. Um, it's about um, her, as I've said. But um, I just wanted to know if I start perfecting it there, um, what it'll do and how it will cascade down with um, child support, Medicare, Centrelink and things in here. I just, yeah. I don't know what the, the fallout will be. And um, I just don't know how it works. Sure. The, uh, the, the federal jurisdiction, you, we can do this one of two ways. Um, Regardless of the jurisdiction that we're walking into, we're walking into that jurisdiction and saying, hey, you're still not doing equity, whether it's uh, statute or whether it's provincial or whether it's federal, they're still doing public law. And we that's the conflict that we have. We're saying, hey, I have a conflict and variance with the rules at law and here's why. And then you, why? Because it does not provide any complete justice. It's a pretty simple one that I know I, I did post on Facebook not long ago, 35 reasons why the public system is kind of crappy. So you can pick any one of those things and, and present it to the judge. So as soon as the judge sees that you're coming with some equitable remedies, some equitable defenses, he's going to have to give your daughter's case special consideration. He's going to have to look at the evidence in a different set of glasses. He's going to have to see if she's done some specific things that he's looking for. And those specific things he's looking for is, has she perfected that interest? Has, does she still have possession or not? Has she gotten anything filed at land titles? Has she got a, uh, a court uh, motion going on her own coming as the plaintiff? So the judge is going to have to consider all these little variables to determine what kind of relief that he can administer to her. Um, so again, if she's rolling in and, if, and as long as she hasn't entered a plea yet, that, that again, that plea of abatement, that's the fundamentally the best oh. thing. 
can I pause you there for a second? It's mainly about um, access with the father. It's got nothing to do with any charges. He's only 12. Okay. So it's mainly about access of the father and getting orders for sure. um, parental okay. things. So I just don't know how it gets affected because a lot of the people and examples I see is all about charges yeah. and about um, people. Sure. So um, here's yeah, charges and driving and traveling and stuff. Yeah. Sure. So as soon as as soon as mom or mom helps daughter perfect her interest in her security interest. Once that's done and it's registered or it's it's in the court, if it's in the pending system, if that ball is spinning, now mom can also perfect the interest in the child's birth certificate, which literally means this. Mom just came in and took control of the entire situation. Whatever mom says goes. If mom says dad is only allowed to see child every two weeks because dad's an asshole, then that's the way it is. So the only way... So so will doing that overrule the current federal court orders? Yes. yes. Because you're showing up with perfected interests, you have all the power now, not the court. You do. And because you have all the Thank power, you. your daughter can say, hey, your honor, um, although my ex is a jerk and doesn't treat my child right, I still want my ex-husband or boyfriend or whatever the situation is. He's also struggling. So you know what? He needs some remedy as well. And this is what equity loves to do. Equity is for both parties. Whereas that law is only for one party. Then it's usually the plaintiff. The plaintiff gets everything and the defendant gets screwed. So this is mom showing up with all the power saying, hey, my daughter is to receive this, 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 and that. She is to receive private health care, private everything, private education, all that stuff. And the judge will actually now write a court order supporting mom's claim. Now, dad, unfortunately, gets left out of the loop, but that's his fault. Why? Because he's not on this Zoom call. So we are always supposed to be coming with a, a good conscience and good faith and, and, and all that good, you know, charitable and moral stuff in our heart. And even though the ex may have been incredibly horrible to your daughter, at some point, you know, Christ's message here is that we are still to forgive and move on. We can't be redeemed if we can't forgive. So even though they may have done some incredibly hurtful things to us in the past, in order to enter the kingdom, we got to let go of all that stuff. And this is where your daughter ultimately has all the power. And even though my ex was a jerk, I'm still going to allow him to see the child X amount of times per week or all the good stuff. Again, be rise above the filth and lead by example. And I'm sure, again, you're on this Zoom call because you're feeling that good-hearted nature already or else none of you would be here. So that will all work out. You take the power. You take the control. You, she dictates the terms. She actually is the one that writes the court order and the judge just approves it. That's ultimately how this happens. So, okay, so... And, okay, so... And, I have orders in. Okay. I have no. orders in at the moment. Oh, do you? oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it's all been submitted. I've, I've, yeah, since January, I had to get her out of hot spots from, from Sydney. She was down with her father for five and a half weeks. So I've, I'm waiting for a, um, a judge to actually pass judgment on whether he's to pay for the, um, the self isolation, the isolation and everything we had to do. So I'm just yeah. waiting for that result. So I've got all these things going on. I'm just, I've got this massive web of things happening. Yeah. I just don't know how one affects the other, but you've sort of illustrated that that will just make all that go away. It, all, my yeah, last it, effort, it, it, hmm. it literally all goes away. And the order, that yeah, you, yeah. Uh, the order that you submitted, Linda, send me that order so that I can take a quick peek at it. Cause I can pretty much guarantee I'm going to improve it for you. So. So I'll will I put in amended, amended. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But again, unless the remedy that you're praying for has something to do with specific performance, accounting, and an injunction, if you missed any of those three, your order is going to be a little bit deficient. But it's but nothing. Easy. I've got nothing because I've, I have I put in those orders and then I found um, CLC. So I'm only just tripping into this now. So yeah, yeah. I've yeah, got no problem, yeah. until the 12th of April to try and okay, um, sure. yeah. ca catch and then, up. Yeah, yeah. And then again, you know kudos for trying again i know we all know that this is not an easy undertaking it takes a lot of courage to do this stuff 
rolling into court without a lawyer and facing the beast by yourself, you know what? There's no greater challenge you're ever going to face. That's it. And if you can conquer that one. Yeah, five years. I've been doing it on my own. Yeah, <laughs> there, yeah there, there you go. It's not easy. I know. But again, so Linda, the, by perfecting that security interest, that puts you in a whole other position that you've never okay. enjoyed before. So we'll yeah, help yeah. you get that set up. We'll help you get that submitted to the court and we'll help that get that ball, ball rolling as well. And again, just like the other participants here, you're going to bring your own claim as plaintiff and you're going to come with an, uh, such substance and such powerful stuff that at law literally just evaporates like a, like, like a shadow when you hit it with a flashlight. It literally goes poof. Right. So you're not going to have to worry about, you're not going to have to worry about the ex not making the child support payments. No, mom does not care about mm -hmm. that stuff at all. Unless, unless okay. it's a more, unless it's a moral thing and, and mom is trying to teach dad a lesson because of whatever reason, you know, okay, that's all fine to daddy. But ultimately here, the court is going to make sure that the treasury accounts are accessed and that the child is provided for mom's provided for grandma's provided for uh, and so on. So can I just ask, um, because um, at the moment I understand that I'm the applicant, uh, does that convert into plaintiff now? Yes, absolutely. Plaintiff covers, ah, right. yeah, plaintiff covers petitioner, applicant, uh, plaintiff. It, right. it's, all, it's all under the umbrella of plaintiff, correct? Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to know how it all cascaded down. So um, how it all, would all affect it if it just changed the whole ball game? That's what yeah, I just well, needed to understand more. Yeah. Well, it, it, well it's going to change the ball game. Yeah. yeah, so we, I'm in the process. I'm in the process of getting our birth certificate, our birth records um, from the hospitals. So I'm in the process of doing that. So I've got that um, bubbling away in the background, as well as all of this on top of it. Okay. Um, yeah, and as soon as, soon as you get that, um, let us know. Uh, depending on which group you're in on the divergence platform, if there's no group there for you yet, Linda, just let us know, and we'll uh, help you create one, and then we can start funneling documents to that group. So again, rather than funneling the documents to individuals, we're going to probably set this up where we're actually sending yep. the documents to the group, and then the part, then the, then the members of that group just pick away at it. We have actually yeah, sharing a section yep. in our website, so we're going to be putting everything there under different sections and countries and all of that. So you guys will have access to that. Yeah, yeah, I've had a good look. I've been downloading like a lunatic. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's why the server. That's why the servers are crashing because you guys are uploading so much stuff. There's so much activity. Yeah. yeah that's why the site's going. That's, yeah. that's why the site's going down. But again, that's yeah, that's, yeah, a, yeah. that's a fantastic problem for yeah. us to have. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much for everything. Yeah. It's just changed my whole life just hearing this. Thank you so much. No problem. You're very that's welcome. Like very nice. Meeting. Thank you. No problem. Excellent. Okay, so tons of questions coming in. It's so wonderful. I know there's a couple of people that are raising their hands, so I'm going to randomly just pick one person. And Scott, if you can please unmute yourself, we'll give you uh, two questions. Oh my goodness, there's a carrot. Why? How are you going? <laughs> it's eating a carrot. Oh my goodness, Camille, I see that. That's so cute. <laughs> okay, so yes, yeah, Scott, I'll uh, we'll give you a quick question here. Where you go? Why? Yeah, um, right. I was in uh, two court cases within a week. Uh, one was a family court, one was a magistrate's um, traffic camera matter. Now, sorry. now, in the children's court, I basically had to play the abatement. Um, I, I did a lot of things in there, actually, but um, her honour decided to send the matter to trial um, in June, which I thought was a bit odd. Now, I actually sent a couple of emails in um, I've got a, a, two letters back from the president of the judges of the children's court. Oh, um, one thing I've, I, I noticed on there is that he actually, uh, all the documents over here that they signed, they never signed their name in, in print their name as well. Yep. Both letters, he printed his name and signed his name, which I thought, well, that's a bit odd, but that could be a good thing. But yep. he's refused to take any more correspondence off me. And also, they've also banned me from going to reception in, in the um in the children's court and they said if I go in there um they're gonna send security after me and kick me out. Okay. So I thought, well hold on. Well yep. if I've entered this plea of abatement, shouldn't it put me in a in a credible position, so yep. to speak. And um 
not me and have been in a position where I'm being told, hey, you can't talk to anyone. Yep. Yeah. Also, in regards to that, on, on the following Friday, I went into the uh, magistrate's court and basically the magistrate, she got me to stand up and sit down on three different occasions. I wouldn't answer to the name of the person. I also surrendered my person, which is my driver's license, my bank card, and also my Medicare card to the security in the courtroom. And yep. she turned around because I wouldn't answer the name of the person. She done an ex parte hearing right in front of me. Oh, okay. Now, um, I turned around and said to her, I said, but you're on. I said, the person's in the court. Oh, yep. I said, you know, and basically is in the hands of security. And she goes, well, the person is not going to speak up ex parte hearing. So I thought, oh, no worries. So I chucked in um, Section 34, Crimes Act 1914, which is any magistrate or judge acting in a press flea with an interest, maximum two years jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> I said that just as the prosecutor was coming to grab me because he was going to throw me out of the court. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I've sent him back, back some more emails as well. Basically, yep. um, I, I threw in um, S121, uh, the Criminal Code, and uh, 76, sorry, 72 I Australian Constitution, which... Um, any judge or magistrate can be brought before uh, the Governor General of the Two House of Parliament to explain misbehaviors in the courtroom. And the S121 was uh, they could be convicted for that as well. Now, okay. I've been going through this for eight years now, important stuff. My daughter's mother married the son of the former detective inspector of police, the head of organized crime. And um, he's as dodgy as what they can get. Uh, he's given <laughs> police ID to my daughter's mother, <laughs> um, the son, Question. who's not a police officer at all, has gone around and told my daughter's friends that he's a police officer. Um, um, excuse me, Scott? He's a real police officer. Scott? Sorry? Sorry, excuse me. It's very hard to understand you, and we're going to have to get you to summarize this and get to your question, okay? So I, I missed most of that, to be honest. So I, if you can summarize I, I, it. I, I got most of it. Did you? Okay, yeah, good. I got most of it. Yeah, we got to keep right. it a little bit shorter there, bud. Yeah, no problem. Right. The daughter's mother... All right, is basically got all the courts and all the coppers backing her up. Um, I just want to know how how do I get any effectiveness with this abatement with me when they've just keep on pushing everything under the carpet? Yeah. So the abatement, once we lodge that bad boy, we're actually supposed to like step away from that court file altogether, other than claiming an interest in that court file number when you're coming later as the plaintiff. Now you're going to come in and you're going to express all kinds of goodies to the court. You're going to say, Hey, yeah, uh, your honor, your honor, um, under the acquisition of a security entitlement attached to a financial asset. Uh, there's again, I'll provide a list of the possible captions for your motion recovering on a certificated security interest. Your Honor, uh, I need to put the secured party into possession through the sheriff, uh, through that writ of seizure and execution and delivery. Um, there's a well, gamut. Here's, here's one thing that's very odd. They don't have sheriffs or bailiffs in our courts here. Yep. Yep. They've, they've, they've removed them. And I actually rang the sheriff's office and I turned around and said, well, isn't your duty as a sheriff to protect my body and my person? And they said, oh, yep. well, that's maybe in America, but not here. And I said, well, who, who protects us in the courtroom then? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you look. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. We, we get some some kind of funny answers coming down the pipe when we start pushing buttons like this because a, they're trying to avoid or deflect some direct stuff because again, liability starts to becoming an issue and they don't want to be admitting stuff that's private onto the public record because that starts to kind of commingle and that starts to kind of muck up the two systems. So again, the abatement. Once we drop that bad boy, we're supposed to literally take a step back and remove that case and bring it on up to a higher jurisdiction, the, the jurisdiction of competent jurisdiction, which is typically the appellate level, the provincial or the summary or the statutory level court, they can never really hear any equitable claims or defenses anyway. But again, like I was mentioning before, it's still important to get those things on the record because you're going to want to use those later. So now that you removed that case from the inferior jurisdiction, now you bring your claim as the plaintiff properly. And by properly, we're going to style it a little different. Like when we did um, Jody's and Tamara's and, and some other friends of ours here, our, the surname is not even on the motion. 
It's your first middle name, if you have a middle name, and yeah, then the title. That's who I've been referring to myself now. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so if, if you're bringing court paperwork or you're answering court documents that has that all caps name or that name with the surname attached to it, as soon as we're kind of negotiating for or we're, or we're representing that name or we're, we're admitting liability for that name, those are all the positions we do not want to be in. So yeah. we're, te we're telling the court and the judge, hey, I'm already not going to be attached to that surname. Why? Because I didn't include it in the documents. It's not even there. Yeah, that's, that's what I've been doing. Um, any, 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 um, well, anything to have to do with anything legal, um, if I have to put my name, all right, I put it with a double colon in a, yep. in a half square bracket, you know, yep. and um, capital for the first letter, then small captions in the end square, sure. end square bracket, which actually removes it from the page. Yep. Yep. And you know what? Uh, I know that that has had some. Um, just, just... Sorry. Sorry, just one quick thing as well. I want to get out. Um, now, the Commonwealth of Australia is American Security Exchange Commission as a property said so that we come under America. Yep. Being that Australia, the Commonwealth of Australia is a property owned company. Now, also, Australia, which I've found out, um, the geographical nautical boundaries of Australia is registered 200 metres off the shoreline and ends at 200 kilometre boundaries at sea. And if you go under the um, Commonwealth Interpretation Act, 1982 b it states that the Commonwealth of Australia includes Norfolk Island. Well, the word include excludes at law. Yeah. So that means that Norfolk Island is actually Australia, right? Yeah. So basically, now, if you look under the, um, the Vatican, the Vatican is the rule of the Holy See and the whole of all commerce on the planet. Right, yep. so that means that Australia is actually reached under the Amundsen Maritime Military Jurisdiction, oh which is 200 metres off the shoreline, 200 kilometre bearings at sea. Mm -hmm. Right, so therefore, right, this country, which is really called New Holland Terra Australis, right, has nothing to do with Australia because yep. Australia is off the shoreline. Sure. Right, so I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to um, just. Yeah, here I, I can even I can it's even answer this. I can see Yeah, like Scott, I, I can actually even answer that before you finish it. It doesn't at the end of the day, equity doesn't really care about how Australia is defined at all, whether it's shorelines and this, that, or the other. Equity actually doesn't even care. All they care about is this. As long as there's a court capable of hearing inherent claims, your chancery documents are identified by your paperwork. So technically, there is no such thing as chancery court. The chancery is on your paperwork. And as, long, as yeah. long as Australia or New Zealand or New South Wales has a court that's capable of hearing competent jurisdictional matters, you can effectively do the stuff I'm describing. Why? Because you're the plaintiff. You're coming in with some hot securities. You're coming in with some, some really good security agreements, some affidavits that support all this stuff. All you got to do is bring it before the court in the proper manner. That's where they procedurally kill us or they don't let us get past the clerk because we're always deficient in our procedure. And it's only been really lately that we've kind of nailed down the procedure where we're finally getting past the clerks. They're stamping our stuff. They're giving us chancery court file listings. We're actually getting court dates coming down the pipe for in chambers, chancery, exclusive equitable hearings. Dynamite. Equity doesn't really care if Australia yeah, well, is, you know, Okay. How are you doing, Scott? Did we answer yeah. most of the questions there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, just, yeah, just in, in, in the insurance court, I had, I had it in a bag, mate. Well, basically, I had, ended up having the um, magistrate run out the court. So I, I sort of knew I had a bit of a win there, but I just couldn't understand why the, um, why the uh, president of the judges um, was telling me, you know, I, I'm not welcome to go back into court and all that, when all I was asking was simple questions about, well, they wanted me to fill out this paperwork that's all in the boxes. Well, yeah. Robert's rule of order, four corner rule, says anything that's represented in the box is enough to do it on the page. And what sure. I've worked out is that when you fill out their court paperwork and you file their court paperwork, you're actually committing sin because yeah. you, you're committing a violation of, of, of um, contract law. Yeah. So, because, and, 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 and in the boxes, you committed a sin. Sure. And here's why. Again, as soon as you drop that abatement, that case is done. Pretend that case just got buried. Pretend it doesn't even exist anymore. So then when we come back trying to do stuff within that case, the judge is saying, ah, uh, my friend, we can't entertain your questions, your 
your initiatives, your emotion now, because that court case no longer exists. So you're actually talking to a ghost that's not there. Oh, sweet. Let's see. Uh, well, so yeah. that's why that's why now leave that old case, start your own, come as the plaintiff, claim your equitable interest in that old court case, though. Why? Because you have the court papers that prove it. It has a court file number. That court file number is just an account number. And if you don't claim your interest in it, you actually abandon it. So it, you abandon our birth certificate and then we abandon our court file numbers. We've led a life of, aban of abandonment. As a matter of fact, I was just saw, I saw this morning that uh, someone was posting the definition of the word birth that they had found somewhere is actually, it means to abandon. Near on. So, so okay. here you go, Scott, uh, again, uh, as we're mentioning with the Thank others here. Very uh, much, yeah, so I, 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 like, feel free to contact us on, on the side there, Scott, and we will help you again, direct the paperwork and tidy up any little- Yeah, I've, um, I've, I've got some information that'll really blow your mind, eh? But it's probably obviously not the right time to share with yeah. me out here, but- um, Yeah, yeah, share yeah, that on. Well, yeah, yeah, my friend, share that on the divergence platform there. Get that to us, and yeah, we'll we'll rock and roll this again. We got, sorry, my friend, but yeah, we got. There's a lot of people in queue here. I'm gonna keep yeah, rocking, no worries, keep the show going. Yeah, uh, uh, for sure. Awesome, awesome. Thanks, Scott. Okay, good stuff. Thank so we're going to call now, Scott. If I can get you to mute yourself there, please. That would be lovely. Excellent. Good, good, good. Okay, and do we have Paul still with us? Hey, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, you betcha. Hi, Jody. Hi, Darren. How are you? Good, good. Wonderful. You got them. Go for it. Uh, what, question, or did you just want to hear uh, my situation? Oh, give her, my friend. Both. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm currently the most wanted uh, man in uh, Canada right now for uh, <laughs> okay. fail failing to identify as a uh, legal fiction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, just to, to break it up real quick, uh, in June of uh, 2019, I was pulled over uh, by an officer and, uh, well, I call them crown agents, but uh, I was uh, arrested for failure to identify uh, for the Highway Traffic Act. I went through the whole spiel, like I'm not using the vehicle for trade and commerce. Um, I did ask the um, agent to identify themselves. They obviously didn't uh, uh, really like that too much. Um, by the end of it, I was uh, had 13 charges. Oh, wow. Okay. Assaulting a police officer, you know, carrying an Uzi in my car, all, all kinds of things, right? That wow. never occurred. Uh, yeah. So I was pretty, I was pretty much uh, labeled a, a, a terrorist in Canada for not identifying. Yeah. Um, I tried to go the route of the habeas corpus right after I was arrested. Um, I was doing what I could, the best I could do at the time. Sure. Yeah. Um, that did not work out. I spent 12 days in jail. I could not get a habeas corpus filed. Yep. Um, that was my understanding of bringing, uh, bringing forth the uh, inherent jurisdiction sure. where we'd be re recognized as a, a natural uh, person versus a legal entity. Yep. Um, once I was released after 12 days on bail under duress and protest, um, I did file a habeas corpus, um, which I found out um, some case law that I was able to do even once I was released. No, um, I had the hearing in a superior court and it was dismissed on the grounds that I was not in forcible confinement. Um, so then they kept trying to push me down the system of the legal fiction. Um, and I appealed the habeas corpus uh, matter as well. That was pending in the Ontario Court of Appeals. Yep. Um, then, then all the courts shut down. Um, I think that was like last year on March. <laughs> nice. Um, so then, um, basically, yeah, they, they, they just picked me up uh, in January of this year for a failure to appear again, because apparently I have, a, I have an issue with not giving my name out yep. or not identifying as a legal, legal fiction. Yep. Uh, it turned out, actually, it's a fraudulent warrant that they put out. We just uh, I got a transcript and everything today. Um, but basically, where, where we're at right now is there's a, another warrant out for my legal fiction. Um, so we've just filed in, what did we file in the courts? We sent the birth certificate, the special affidavit, the security agreement, and a plea of abatement awesome. to the attorney general. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So now you guys now roll, now that you've done that, you've sent that notice, literally walk away from that old case. Now, again, come as the plaintiff because all that substance is of little, well, it has some force and effect as a defendant, but not much. It really has a lot of force and effect when you bring it as the plaintiff. 
that's the game changer. Getting that chancery court action started, that's the big game changer. Again, coming with clean hands, habeas corpus is one of the primary equitable remedies that is heard at law if you have clean hands. You can have clean hands while you're in jail without the birth certificate. How? Your Honor, uh, the defendant desires to assign the security interest and attach it to that certificate of security represented by the name that's on the court docket that I'm here for and deliver that to the secured party. If you can string anything like that together, that is telling the judge in the court, hey, you're no longer in possession of that certificate that's bringing a lot of doom and gloom into your world. You've now attached that doom and gloom to the new registered owners. And just that type of simple wording is going to be enough to make the judge get up and leave the courtroom. Because you're speaking equitable defenses and you're, and you're talking about now coming and bringing your proper claim. And that's the stuff that's turning the jurisdictions around for us. But if you don't exercise that stuff or if you don't get it on the record or if you don't say it, you waive it. And as soon as you waive it once, twice, or three times, you're actually no longer entitled to it. There's a proper time and a proper place to say the right thing. Again, a plea of abatement actually doesn't work if you use it at sentencing day. No, <laughs> if you had a plea of abatement, you wanted to use it before you actually entered any kind of a plea. And that's kind of a the bit of a sticky situation that James ran into there the other day, where he had previously I'd actually entered a plea of not guilty. So now to come in and enter a plea of abatement, it, it's a little counterproductive, but I'm pretty pretty confident we're still going to be able to make it work. So, so again, it's, it's saying the right thing at the right time. Now, you've done a lot of good stuff. You've got a lot of stuff on the record already. Now, whether you have a, a maxim on the record yet or not doesn't matter because your affidavit coming as the plaintiff is going to have a few. And that's where the nuts and bolts are. And the judge is going to, the judge has to take cognizance of it. Why? Because like you said, you guys have already surrendered the certificate and it's not in your possession. That very act alone forces the judiciary to give you a shot in equity. And we only need, we, yeah, we only need to know, we only need to know a few key principles to pull off what we want to pull off while we're in equity. And here's what it is. You got two remedies. One's public, one's private. The first one is this. The, Your Honor, the, the, the defendant hereby prays for the relief in the alternative or generally or specially. There's two types of prayers for relief here. General relief is all the incidental things that a person similarly situated to me exercising the equitable defenses that are typical. All those remedies are supposed to come. We don't even know what a lot of those are. Some of them are things like having a new trustee appointed, but the special relief you're praying for, the extraordinary relief that you're praying for is the accounting, the injunction, and the specific performance. Those are the, the they're so critical. Now, the public system in the last handful of years, they've actually changed it. They don't want us to pray for an accounting, an injunction, and specific performance. What they want us to say is, your honor, I am seeking, or he or she is seeking, or the defendant is seeking, the plaintiff, whatever, is seeking an order declaratory of the rights of the parties. That is telling the judge, hey, who has priority here? Is it Jody or is it me? Jody is still all public at law. She's still a sinner. She's still a debtor. She's still like crappy. Whereas, Your Honor, look at the look, look at look at the priority. Look at the priority I have. I've perfected my title. I've brought it before the court. I've attached consideration. I've done all this stuff. And then again, the courts will not presume. Sorry, I'm just so caught on the crappy part. The court, <laughs> the court will not presume a better <laughs> title than the other party. So it's up to the party to bring the proof of the perfected interest into court. And literally, you could do it in the parking lot on the way into court. Literally, you could walk into court and do it right there. But just you just had, need to have the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to write that stuff on that certificate and put it into the possession of the sheriff for the secured party. That's all it has to be. So, so just a quick, quick understanding of what's going on. Um, from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 6, and Article 16 of the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, Article 16, where we have the right to take recognition as a person before the law, everywhere before the law, if, if I'm not exercising my right to take that 
recognition as a legal entity, I'm maintaining my recognition as a, as a, as a natural living human. Right. Sure. Yep. So, so if they, if, if they were to put their hands on me as a living human being, that would be a false arrest. That would be assault. Correct. That would yep. be. Yeah. And it would okay. be, yeah. And it would be breach of trust. As long as you're no longer in possession of that certificate, if you're still in possession of it, no, they can beat your ass. But how come, how come, how come it says it's a right, it's a right of ours um, under article 16, like everyone has the right to recognition yeah, everywhere as a person. Yeah, that, that right is kind of hidden. That right is not to be enjoyed by public citizens that have no rights at all. That's not what that's for. It's for the private people who have exercised something in the background that entitles them to be protected. The Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms actually says, the security of the person is guaranteed. Right. It, doesn't say that, it doesn't say the security of a man or woman is guaranteed. No, it says the security of the certificate is guaranteed. Yes. So, so surrendering a notarized, like the old, I guess this was an old method, but surrendering a notarized uh, copy of a birth certificate, is that not surrendering possession of, of the certificate in a court? It is, um, but again, as long as if you, if you can do it with the uh, with the original copy, that's even better. But if all you had is a notarized copy, that's fine. And then you just have to tell the court, "Hey, and I hereby declare that any and all other certificates floating around, uh, around out there are either deemed lost or, or or destroyed." And then that way, if someone were to find a birth certificate laying somewhere, they wouldn't be able to go and use it. Because as soon as that number is entered into the system, it shows up as, oh, this, this, this number has been canceled. Mm. And no one else can negotiate that. Not even you, actually. So, And what, what about seeking the administration of justice? Does that change the jurisdiction into court of equity as well? Uh, I would say you are seeking um, complete justice as a remedy. Complete justice versus the administration of justice, that can be construed a little bit. Um, and until you're very precise with that type of phraseology, I wouldn't want to leave it on the table for them to pick it up and try to like, you know, monkey with it. So again, complete justice is the go-to word. It's used throughout Gibson's materials. Um, it's very prolific. The, a very good friend of ours in Winnipeg, he rolled into court for his very first, uh, for his first application. And the judge says to Rob, says, what, do you, what is it here you're seeking? And Rob said, complete justice. And the judge almost fell off his seat. He was literally blown away. So again, super important what were the, the specific words that we're using there. So I, again, I highly recommend just using the complete justice there instead. So, so, so I think I think I think I think we're about to get a time warning violation here. Okay. So. Maybe. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Um, yes, we do have several questions that are coming in here. We are approaching the two hour mark though. And we have another major meeting that we've had some amazing people come out of the, what the woodwork with all of this. We are actually interviewing a private citizen in, um, Australia. So we are very excited about that. So we are going to be recording that. We don't know if she's going to allow us to release that or not, but nonetheless, we have a very important meeting we do have to go to. So I'll take, we'll take maybe two more questions here okay so please if i click on you guys please honor the one question rule okay <laughs> so really like narrow down your question because again we do have to leave around nine o'clock and uh what, what what we can do guys is for us for me and jody uh etc to be doing this stuff for whoever we didn't get to tonight don't worry we can do another one of these and two or three nights, it doesn't matter. This is what we do now. So just let us know uh, on the platform if, hey, you guys didn't get to my question. So I'm one of the ones that's gonna be in line number one on the next Zoom meeting. Again, we can do a few of these a week. Absolutely. So Danny, you have been very patient. So if you could please unmute yourself and we would love to uh, hear what question you have for Darren. Yeah, you. <laughs> Here, I'll help you unmute. There. Mute. I there. got it, right? There yes. you go, yeah. Oh my gosh, hi guys. Hi guys. Yeah. The vocabulary you're using here, it's like I'm on a different planet, okay? <laughs> I really mean it. And I, I, I try, you know, I make notes and then I have papers all over the place and I have to put them together. You said, make it fast. I'm gonna make it fast. I have a minute of a recording from a judge and I went there 
I saw him three times, okay? And I'm dead with, you know, with his presence. He doesn't even acknowledge me. Today was a day where I was, you know, I was polite, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna click the recording and then I ask the question real quick. It's just a minute, okay? Sure. Cause he didn't, he didn't bother to listen to me. Okay, hold it. Excuse me, I'm confused. Are you going to talk to me? Because she said I can't in the bill. Well, I'm sorry, what are, you, what are you doing? Okay, I need to talk to the constable or to the person because I was denied to bring my facts out when we had this eviction. Well, I didn't know you were the judge. It, it's in the hands of the constable now. It's called a writ of possession. I can give you his phone number. Well, it's all based on the fraud. And well, the we have, ma'am, you, your times are all passed for anything to talk no, about. No, I didn't have a chance well, to start. I'm sorry, I can't I was, talk to you. Are you denying me justice? I am. I am. You have. You, you are denying are me justice? Your times are passed. Yeah, there ain't no time judge. limit to nothing because I have not signed any of your papers. How you doing there? Sorry. Uh, okay, let me get you out. So, you are denying me justice. Is that it what you yeah. say? Did you not justice? Yep, that, no, that's good, Danny. Yeah, that's, I've already heard enough. Um, okay, did you, did you notice the judge there saying he was talking about a writ of possession? Are you going to talk wait, 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 wait. wait I need to... My gosh, guys, I am losing it. You know what? This guy, he's a judge. And yeah. I thought he was a, an employee, right? Because he wanted me to put a mask on. And I say, listen, guys, this is an open building. And I cannot wear a mask because I'm going to faint on the on the spot. And there's a new number. And I didn't even know it was a charge. So he doesn't talk to me. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Did you hear the judge there saying when he was talking about a writ of possession? I don't know what that means. I'll tell you. A writ of possession is a court order telling the sheriff or yourself that somebody is in possession of a security certificate, that's where the liability, liability lands. So because you have admitted to volunteer to serve the legal system, again, through our social insurance numbers and social security numbers and national security numbers and all those things, when the judge is actually saying, yes, I can deny you justice, he's not telling you a lie. He actually can deny you justice and here's why because you have dirty hands and you have an imperfect title. As soon as you fix that, now he cannot deny you justice. It's impossible. So a writ of possession, yeah. So a writ of possession is part of what the sheriffs are gonna do for you there. What I was mentioning a moment ago about a writ of execution and a writ of delivery, the, the writ of delivery is part of the writ of possession. The delivery puts it into the possession of somebody all done under writs. And writs are just fancy kind of terms and phrases for kind of a special court order or a special court instruction. The writs are actually pretty important. So believe it or not, the judge actually just gave you your remedy, Danny, because now you can come back in and said, and you can say, well, I was denied all my remedy at, at, at law or on the public side. And now that I've perfected my interest in this security certificate, your honor, now I know you cannot deny me justice. Why? Because no trust can fail for one of a trustee. Okay, how do I do that now? <laughs> we'll talk to you on the sidelines and I'll help you with all that. How's that sound? <laughs> I have an eviction tomorrow. The, the, either tomorrow on the 18th, the freaking constable is appearing here. And I'm okay. not, I'm telling you, he's not going to handcuff me. He's not going to port me out. I, yep. I promise you that. Yep. Okay. Worst case scenario, uh, Danny, if you did have that birth certificate, do that simple little uh, writing on it and attach a silver coin. If you have a silver coin, not uh, put a stamp on it. If you didn't have a stamp, uh, I have a silver coin from uh, 42 or 43 because I found it addicted out 10 years okay. ago. Perfect. Have that ready and have that and give that to the constable tomorrow. So here's the person you're looking for. Evict the person all you want. Is it what person? My real one or the one with the with the with the sampling or with the with the with the I am a woman? Uh, either or. Doesn't matter. Just pick one. It, they both get okay. the job done. Yep. Just I pick hope one. Dimba, Dimba, I hope you're listening. You got you are the one who helps me, right? Hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. No problem, Danny. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks. Good, good. Oh, and we'll take, bye, hon. And we'll take one more question from Allison. You've been very oh, patient God. as well. So please unmute yourself and uh, we'll give you a question here. Hi guys, thanks. I've just got some really basic questions around this. To start with, I don't actually have a court case coming up. So how do you implement this process if you're not 
appearing in court. You bring the, the, the court process. You're bringing a moral. It's like not amoral as in bad, but you're bringing a moral claim before a judge in a competent court of jurisdiction. He's actually going to look at your endorsements. He's going to look at your, your securities. He's going to look at your intent. And again, intent and equity is everything. We don't have to have all the I's dotted and the T's crossed and all that stuff. No, nope. as soon as the judge sees enough evidence that you sort of know what's going on, he will come to your aid and rescue you from that at-law system. But the way to do it is you bring the case as the plaintiff. I'll show you how to get that motion drafted. Um, we just did one here for uh, Jody and Tamara in British Columbia. I've never seen such a short court motion before. It, it's, it's literally so thin, you actually think, well, that can't work because there's like, there's literally nothing to it. It's so simple. But that's actually a very good thing. And it helps us because it doesn't give the crown a lot of wiggle room. They can't look at our substance down and go, well, they kind of missed this and they didn't get that right. And that's completely wrong and blah, 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 blah. Whereas when we're giving it to them in two or three sentences, there's no wiggle room at all. And the judge, based on you delivering that certificate, again, Allison, get that thing out of your possession. That's the be that's the most important thing we can do. You send it to the sheriff or the bailiff at the courthouse that's closest to you. And the sheriff, all you really okay. got to do is say, hey, hey, sheriff, uh, take custody of this person. And I am filing a motion before the court for settlement purposes. Uh, I, I hope to have that done in the next 21 days, whatever. And then the sheriff will literally hold on to that for you until you show up. And then you go have your little hearing. It'll be in chambers. And the judge is going to ask you, Allison, what is it you want to do here, here, here today? Well, Your Honor, I would like to have a court order uh, issued for the following. An injunction, an accounting, and specific performance. And if you don't like those words, Your Honor, how about an order declaratory of the rights of the parties? I need you to draft a court order saying that I have priority over everything. Good against the world. A very, very nice position to be in. And that's literally what your court order will say. I'll help you draft that again, because the plaintiff or the one bringing the motion, they're the ones who draft the orders. The judges never draft orders. It's the plaintiff okay. that does it. The judge will review it. He'll look at it and he'll say, ah, nope, nope, nope. Or yep, yep, yep. And then he'll approve it. And then he'll sign it. And now you're good to go. And does that have to be done in the Beautiful. Supreme Court? Does that have to be done in the Supreme Court? Nope. Any judge will hear that in any jurisdiction. And if they don't want to do it, then you just remove it from that jurisdiction. You take it to the next one as uh, the appellant level or simply just the chancery listing. Again, I'll post uh, a copy of what we just did here recently in British Columbia. And all it is is a chancery, chancery listing special. That's all it is at the top of the document. As soon as the clerk sees that, they instantly know to go, uh oh, what else have you got? And then we pulled out the land titles filing that says, see this? This is where I've filed an interest regarding this security. And it's actually registered at the property registry. As soon as the clerk saw that, that was the game changer. They let they 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 put two chance record listings through in about half an hour, and I was literally blown away at how simple it was. And do you want to give them a little update from the letter that we got here today? Uh, so yeah, we got a letter back from uh, the Registrar General at Land Titles saying that he kept the documents, being the birth certificate, the special affidavit, the security agreement. Da -da 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 -da. He kept all that but he returned the silver coin, which is absolutely fine. Don't let that freak you out. Why? Because the silver, pretend it's just the canoe, the canoe that takes your interest over there. Once they're done with the canoe, they actually send you the canoe back. They're not actually supposed to keep it. Although we have had instances where they have kept it. Doesn't really matter. Point is, they kept all the other paperwork. Why did he keep the paperwork? Because... The plaintiff is about to show up in court and about to have all these matters settled in equity. So although he goes on to say, I don't have the authority to do this. And then he wrote about another paragraph. All I had to do is see, I am not authorized to deal with this. So, okay, so then who is authorized to deal with it? And as a matter of fact, I put this into the paperwork. I specifically said, hey, Registrar General, if your office does not have the capability to deal with this, please refer it to a judge for approval. So he sends us back a letter saying, I'm not authorized to deal with this. Okay, great. If you don't want to send the motion before a judge for approval, we will. So although the letter back from Land Tuttles is saying, hey, take your silver coin back, but I'm keeping your documents. And by the way, I'm not authorized to deal with this. 
That tells me fundamentally what to do. It's so simple. So as a matter of fact, what I'm getting at with this statement is, I think uh, in terms of revising our process, I'm probably going to steer us to literally chop out the section of sending it to the Registrar General. We're just not even going to bother with that anymore. We're just going to go right to the judge. Send it right to the courthouse. Right. Yep. Just send it right there. Can I be clear? Because you're probably the same as us. Imagine you're probably the same as us. A magistrate's court is not a judge. It's a lawyer. Yep. Um, is that fine? Yeah, same. Diff. And the uh, last question quickly. Can I take a 16 year old through at the same time with me? Or do you lodge that separately? Yeah, I would do it same separately. Time. Yeah, I would do it separately. But you're bringing the motion as the appropriate person. <laughs> yep. And again, no surnames, okay. just use titles. Heir, uh, Allison hyphen, heir to the decedent's legal estate. Oh, that's another beautiful title. Uh, Allison hyphen protected purchaser, Allison hyphen Sestake trust, Allison hyphen, uh, you know, again, there's a whole bunch of little things that we can add to that and tweak that and make that beautiful for you. But again, Allison, yeah, go ahead and hit us up on the sidelines here and we'll help you uh, directing all the traffic and all the good stuff that we need to do. And yep, no problem. And so, yes, lovely. You're welcome, Allison. So keep in mind, you guys, you have to remember when we launched this company, we were, we just started the paperwork. So we completely put the, the cart before the horse here, but intentionally, we wanted to go through this live with you guys. And as we were going through it, we were bringing people with us. So, you know, we've had, we have our little hiccups. It's not like we're being denied though. We're just, they're teaching us how to fine tune this. And then we're spreading it and, and letting it funnel down to you guys so that you know what, where the, you know, the fat that we can cut off of this, right. And streamline this process. So that's kind of what's exciting about this. So yes, Darren is definitely on me and Tamara's, uh, paperwork here uh, for tomorrow so he's going to get that rolling and again we're going to keep giving you guys updates so once we get that through and you have to do something too you have to redo the well there's yeah i got there's i got lots to do i mean almost everybody on here i have you know we got little projects on the go i know Kristen, paul they've got some big big stuff coming down the pipe uh working on that uh for you guys as well bringing that claim again as plaintiff that's the game changer if we never bring our own cross claim or our own claim or our adverse claim or however you want to phrase that we are seriously leaving a lot on the table for the other party. We're actually showing up with nothing and that's not good. And, and again, being in the defendant position sucks and expect to fail as the defendant, but just get those couple of equity, equitable maxims down and let the judge say, I can't hear those. That's the magic words. You actually want the judge to say that. That's how you come back to him later in that de novo rehearing in equity. Well, Your Honor, you couldn't hear my equitable defenses there, but you're sure going to hear them over here, aren't you? And he's going to have to say yes. And you're flying at that point. And just a quick update on the white passport, please. Uh, quick update on the white passport. Yeah, okay, so that's getting spun into the, the, the court process now. Uh, we haven't heard anything back. It's We're approaching two weeks now, um, which actually means they could be responding any day. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do. However, if they don't, we don't care because we're going to chance record here right away and we're going to get that taken care of then anyway. So the passport was just an experiment using the land titles output, that one single piece of paper. Hey, passport people, this is proof of a security entitlement. entitlement. Do you like it or not? Because if you don't like it, fine, I'll go get a judge to approve it and then you'll have to do it. But again, that's in limbo. It's coming down the pipe and it's, uh, it, it's being worked out. Excellent. Okay. So again, we don't hide anything from you guys. We're going to share our failures. We're going to share our successes with you guys, because this is how we all grow and learn together. Right? So uh, that's, what's wonderful about it. So thank you guys very much. Um, what's wonderful about Darren is like I said, he is willing to do these kinds of questions and answers. We were just getting bombarded by so many people that had actual court cases that instead of doing one offs with everybody, that's why we brought you guys all together. So again, if you guys have particular subjects and and topics that you guys want us to cover we can even maybe do a newbie um kind of zoom meeting where people who are very new into this you know we can kind of really dumb this down for you guys you can ask what might be you know you might be embarrassed thinking it's an elementary question asking us certain things right because some of the language in here can be a little intimidating but again but again don't worry about being intimidated because i'm the one that didn't graduate high school <laughs> There you go. So there's no dumb questions. And so we want to make sure everyone kind of keeps us up, 
with this and understands it. I mean, I took weeks and weeks to really wrap my brain around this. So I understand where you guys are coming from. So yeah, let's maybe do a newbie um, Zoom meeting and then maybe we can do a more advanced one so we can kind of separate the two so that we don't lose you in the language. Half the time, I don't understand what he's saying. So I totally get it, right? So you bet to you guys, but thank you everyone for, for joining. Um, if you want to put some notes up on what you guys thought about this on the actual invite or, you know, put it up on the page, you know, this is how we kind of get this kind of stuff out so that more people can join and we can help more people. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So wonderful. Thank you guys, everyone. We are sending you lots of love and you betcha just keep trucking along and we're, we're working as fast as we can behind the scenes. Just know that. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank All right, you. you guys take care. We'll talk to you guys bye. soon. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Thank you, Fred. Okay, awesome, guys. <laughs> All right, you guys. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye now.